Wow. Oh, there's a bomb. Aloha, I am Surfline Director of Forecasting, Kevin Wallace. Welcome to Surfline's Super Swell Saturday. We've got an XXL swell that has filled into the Hawaiian Islands this afternoon. Actually been on the rise all day. You can see bombing surf here on uh, the island of Maui. This is out at Jaws. We've got, so we're streaming footage live from a helicopter. Uh, we are going to be moving over to Oahu's North Shore at times to check out what's happening at Waimea and the Outer Reefs. And uh, overall, just checking out what is, is happening uh, with this major swell that's impacting the Hawaiian Islands. I am joined by Big Wave Charger, former Big Wave Tour Commissioner, uh, Mike Parsons. And we're just going to talk you through what we're seeing here, what we expect to see through the remainder of the day. And uh, overall, just enjoying this incredible footage from uh, what is the largest swell of the season for the Hawaiian Islands, uh, probably the largest swell of at least the last couple of years and um, you know, one of the largest swells of the last decade here. Uh, we do expect the swell to be building throughout the remainder of the afternoon. It's about at peak for Oahu now, but it's gonna hold steady for Maui at Jaws. We are expecting a, a further build through the remainder of the afternoon and through this evening. Should see some the biggest waves of the day for Jaws uh, sometime around sunset tonight. Uh, we've got beautiful conditions over on Oahu, light east southeasterly trades, uh, uh, about as clean as it's going to get for this size. Uh, Maui, as it, it tends to do, it's a totally different story there. Breezy east southeasterly trades. We've got a lot of guys kite surfing and windsurfing, uh, but also people towing in as well and seeing some bombs out there. Uh, Ian Walsh just rode one. Uh, it's most likely going to remain a towing affair for, for Maui this afternoon with this very large swell. Uh, this long period and also the breezy easterly trades that makes it incredibly difficult and incredibly challenging uh, to try and paddle in. Uh, here's the rewind and, and, and snips. I believe he's, this is Ian Walsh. Is that is that correct? Yeah. It looks like it. Yeah, that's, board. Def yeah. that's definitely Ian. Um, board looks awesome. Man, it's windy out there. It's uh, like like the locals there call it. They call it Maui glass. It's uh, amazing it's just a wind tunnel and when, when you get out there um those trades tend to pick up throughout the day and uh those tow boards you got to have them really heavy and um uh, you know you watch the, the early days laird and, and the boys um towing out there they really perfected the equipment and these guys nowadays like he on that last wave his board would be around 20 pounds at least and uh looks like he had good control even in all that wind which is uh crazy and, and like you said kevin with the period being this strong um Jaws is insane the way it, it doubles up. You got the wind, you got the swell period. The waves are moving so fast that I'm sure uh, a few guys were paddling first thing in the morning, but right now it looks like mostly a, a tow affair. Yeah, you know, the um, so when we, we speak to swell period and, and when we say it's a very long swell period and how difficult that makes it for paddling, you know, one of the things that um, is really challenging is when you have a, a longer period swell, they move faster than shorter period swells. So, you know, out in the open ocean, a, a, a swell with a period of, of 20 seconds is moving around 30 knots out in the open ocean. It does slow down a little bit as it moves into shallow water, but it's moving incredibly fast. There's so much power behind it that, uh, it, you know, at, at some point it just becomes almost impossible to be able to paddle into these extra large waves uh, on top of having, you know, probably 20 to 25 knot side offshore winds. And then when you mix that, that wind coming up the face with a, you know, with a, a swell moving that fast, all of a sudden it feels like the waves, the wind's probably about 40 knots. Is that about right, Snips? Yeah. You just airborne when you try to paddle. It's, it's the heavy thing definitely is that swell period and the speed of the wave. It's like in the, the 2018 big wave event there, we had similar day to this and, and similar wind actually increasing through the day. And um, you saw a lot of the surfers just airborne on the takeoffs. And um, you, you also saw some of the most incredible rides, the big barrel that Twiggy didn't make, which was uh, you know one of the most historic rides ever. But you can see that wind on the camera right now. It's just, I mean, it's at least 25 knots there. And, and um, along with that swell period, the way of moving that fast just makes it so hard to paddle. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll move over to, to Waimea Bay now, which looks relatively tame in comparison, but I can assure you it, it's not. We're, you know, I've seen uh, actually a couple closeout sets here at the bay throughout the day. One came through around late this morning. Um, you know, when Waimea Bay is starting to close out, that means, you know, it's easily 40 foot faces, if not a little bit bigger than that, 45, uh, maybe even a little larger than that. So, you know, very large swell, but uh, much more, or, yeah, much more user friendly conditions, as user friendly as it can be at, at, at 40 to 50 feet. Um, but we've got much lighter winds here. It's out of the east, southeast. Uh, we actually have a front that's moving through. It's going to pass to the north of Hawaii uh, this evening. Um, uh, the island of Oahu would actually see some light variable onshore winds overnight and into tomorrow morning. Um, that's going to be actually the really interesting thing for Jaws heading into tomorrow is the swell is going to be on the decrease. It is going to be dropping off through the day, but we expect to see much, much, much lighter winds on Sunday. Um, so I think, you know, especially first thing tomorrow when that swell is still at its largest, and the wind basically light and variable, which almost never happens for, for Jaws and, and uh, Maui in general. Um, I think we're really going to see some great paddle waves in the morning tomorrow, um, which, which would be it should be a treat. You know, Snip's going back when, when you were charging here and you, you had a, a you know, really historic ride on a, a swell in 2002. Can you walk us through just the, you know, what it's like to, to, to have to deal with that type of wind shock and this type of size and um, you know, how do you, how do you prepare? How do you, how do you deal with these six foot moguls that are, that are coming at you from, from that type of wind? Yeah, it's super challenging. Um, um, in the 2002 swell, we were actually in a, a tow in contest and I was, uh, towing with Brad and we were, we were in a heat with Buzzy Kerbox, who was a, a local there. So we just, we just actually said, Hey, let's follow these guys and see what they do. We actually watched, uh, Laird and, um, Dave Kalama and all those guys uh, surf the first thing in the morning before the event started to try to figure out how to do it. It was our first time towing there, but it's it's still radical to, to have the wind coming up the face. It creates these huge like moguls on the way down, and a lot of times you get airborne and, and um, at those highest speeds, you're you're trying to you know have really good equipment that can stick down to the to the water and not cavitate and really just keep up with the speed of the wave. So. Navigating those bumps at at, uh, is, at Jaws is is quite an experience. Um, and on the contrary, you see the, the east southeast winds here at Waimea that's just groomed on the face, uh, a lot less bump on the face, and that that way these guys are able to um, sit under these things and paddle into them. Yeah, it's 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 interesting what a major difference you can see in the wind from from Oahu to, to Maui, you know, it's, it's they're relatively close, obviously. Um, but, you know, on a day like today, we're probably, you know, what, maybe 10 knots of wind, something like that. I haven't looked at the latest wind observations for, for, for Oahu, but uh, easily double that, probably two and a half to maybe almost three times that strength over on Maui. Um, and a lot of times that does happen when you start to see the flow shift a little more east to east, southeast. Um, you know, what happens is you'll get some blockage uh, from of that wind by the, by the Big Island of Hawaii, you know that you know that there's two really large volcanic peaks in, in Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea, uh, which I believe are both over 12,000 feet, if, if memory serves me correctly. Um, and so the the airflow likes to kind of go with the, the path of least resistance. A lot of times, instead of going up and over, uh, it'll kind of uh, bend around to the sides and and somewhat accelerate on the north side of the Big Island. Uh, and then that's just on a on a V line basically for um, uh, for for for, um, for Maui. And you know, here's a pulled back perspective of Jaws. You can you really give uh, get a good indication of the power of the swell. You can see these well defined lines. Um, you know, waves that are probably I don't know, you know 50 feet on the face, if, if not a little bit bigger. Um, and just you know what an incredible shot this is. Um, we as as we jumped on this call earlier on, uh, we were uh, we actually were able to watch it the, the the flight from from the airport pretty much all the way out here. Uh, so pretty uh, neat treat to see um, that that that. Um, uh, that that trip out to, to Jaws along the, the North Maui coastline and uh, to see this perspective here is is, is really pretty cool. You know, Snips, you, you mentioned uh, Buzzy Kerbox as being a, uh, one of the Maui locals and, and that's something that's always Im 
impressed me about just the Maui guys in general. You know, you had that that first generation of, of kind of towing guys, Buzzy and Laird and Dave Kalama and and that whole crew, kind of the strap crew that started, I don't know, kind of mid to late 90s. Uh, and then and really push things through the early 2000s. And you have this next generation of, of surfers there, like Ian Walsh and, and uh, now obviously Billy Kemper, who's a four-time PI Challenge champion, and some of the younger guys too, like Tyler Rohn and, and, and guys like that. The, the thing that always strikes me um, when I watch those guys surf is how comfortable they are in, in these incredibly heavy conditions, especially with the wind. Um, again, it's, it's just like, it it can't be underemphasized how challenging it is um, to to have this type of wind. And a lot of times, like if you're watching, say the PI challenge, and and from from the the, the safety of your computer at home, uh, it it kind of looks perfect. You know, it's like oh, it's blowing offshore, and it's just like it's this big perfect peak, but it's so windy and so bumpy you can't really see those you know those those six foot moguls at those six foot chop. It does look a little more challenging today. I will say that. Um, but you know, sometimes uh, it, it it does look easy, but it's it's nothing but and and the Maui the Maui crew in general, just you know whether the old school guys are all the way through the the younger guys, the younger guys and younger gals now um, that are charging, they they just make it look so easy. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, you know, they they all surf Fukipa a lot, and and that's windy a fair bit, and you also notice a lot of them, you know, obviously Maui the. The Windy Island, they're so good at all water sports. You look at what Kai Lenny's doing um, on a daily basis over there, whether it, even when it's small, he's, he's in those elements all the time. So they get really comfortable in those conditions. But the thing that's crazy too about Maui is, um, and Jaws in particular, it's kind of producing the best big wave surfers in the world right now with Billy Kemper and Kai Lenny and Ian Walsh, I think are the three guys from, from Maui and from Jaws that have Kind of put themselves as the premier big wave surfers on every swell everywhere in the world right now like you said you got the local crew like you know albie lair and tyler ron and you've got you know Paige alms on the women's side from there who's kind of been leading the charge for the for the gals all over the world so it's an amazing um uh island for talent in the in the big wave world and uh, it, i just think they have great uh areas to practice and dealing with that wind they go to a place like like mavericks or over here at YMA and it and it's everything else seems easy after your deal with uh, jaws yeah the class classy like just, <laughs> like oh yeah no no big deal uh this is easy um yeah. well if you're, you're you know if you're, you're just joining us here we are uh this is a super swell saturday um i am D director of forecasting kevin wallace uh at surfline i'm joined by Mike Parsons, and, and we've got a giant swell that's hitting Hawaiian Islands today. Uh, it's been building throughout the morning. Uh, it's, it's basically going to be peaking this afternoon. Uh, for Oahu, it's essentially been peaking since around late this morning, and it's just going to continue all day. Maui is going to continue to build through the second half of the day. You know, if we look at some of our buoy observations, um, buoy one, which is located uh, right around 270 miles northwest of uh, the island of Oahu, and is a really great indicator for us um, in terms of just timing of swells and size of swells and things like that. Um, you know, it's about eight-ish hours from Oahu on a swell of this direction in this swell period, and about 12 hours from from Maui. Uh, we saw that that buoy peak starting around 1:40 last night or early this morning, I should say, uh, and then that continued through. We kind of saw a secondary peak around six to seven, six to eight o'clock. Um, so again, that, that's a great indicator for us that, you know, swell is peaking right now for Oahu and uh, it's going to be peaking late this afternoon and this evening for, for Maui and for Jaws. And, you know, Stiffs, we've, we've had the, or I, I should say, I've had the good fortune of working with you over the years doing, um, you know, whether it was big wave tour events or, you know, going way back, like some, some Billabong Pro events like at Mandaka and, and Jay Bay and, and things like that. You know, when as as the the, the former big word big wave tour commissioner, you know what what were the challenges that that you faced with with calling on an event like you know say the PI challenge or something like that? Oh man, it was pretty stressful. As you you remember some of those calls, it, it's crazy when you see these storms pop up on the maps and you start getting the calls from all the big wave surfers. Everyone starts talking, and a few days goes by, and it starts developing. The storm starts happening, and then. 
you know, it's all about conditions um, and wind and things that as you get into those final 72 hours of making the call and, uh, you know, the timing of the swell, all those factors. Um, and it's, it's, it's hard because uh, on the big wave world tour, you've got, you know, a pretty full day, especially like at Piahi, you've got men's and women's. We had um, 12 girls and 24 guys. So it's a full day of surfing. So you're trying to find a swell that it can accommodate uh, that period of time that peaks right at the right time. So all those, all those challenges. And then you, of course, got to factor in all the water safety and, and working with the teams there on, on how they're going to keep all the competitors safe. And so, yeah, it's a, it was a really challenging job. I, um, Pete Mel did it as well. Um, I did it for a few years. I think it's one of the, one of the tougher jobs for sure is uh, one of the harder moments I ever had doing anything was the 2018 swell. Um, deciding to call it off uh, midway through the men's. It was some of the most spectacular surfing any of us had ever seen, but I was getting calls from the competitors from the channel. It was getting wild, but the buoys were, I was harassing you on what the buoys were doing. It was just, it was radical. The water patrol was overwhelmed. There were skis upside down. It was like, you know, really feeling like someone might drown and the wind was coming up. Um, so we decided to call it off because we knew the next day we'd still have swell. But those were, those were uh, some of the most stressful moments of my life for sure. Trying to, you know, figure out what to do. I was also working with Gary Linden on the cliff, and uh, so we had a really good crew of people, you know, helping me with the decisions. But but that was a stressful job for sure. Um, but really, really rewarding at times too. I mean, we had an incredible event at, at Nazare, a paddle day that Twiggy won, and that was. I felt like we nailed it. I worked obviously closely with you on the conditions there, but when it all comes together, you get a swell of this size and you nail it and everyone comes in safe. It's a, it's a pretty rewarding uh, feeling and it's awesome. I'm a huge fan of what all these guys are doing out there. Um, and it's just, I, I love watching it. I love being a part of it. Yeah. You know, just thinking about that 2018 event, I um, was, was watching at home and, and, getting progressively more nervous as the day wore on and, and just looking at buoy readings myself and chatting with you. And, um, you know, at one point I, I really kind of got emotional because I was, uh, I was scared that somebody was going to die. Um, and it was, it got to the point where like, gosh, am, am I responsible for this? Um, so I was, yeah. I was somewhat relieved when you called it off to tell you the truth, you know, as, as a surf fan, slightly disappointed, but, um, yeah, yeah, I was, I was just, I got really, was really getting scared myself. Yeah, I think that was the most historical heat in big wave surfing ever. The Twiggy's wave and Billy Kemp, Billy's wave and Twiggy back to back, and a couple of those wipeouts. Alex Patello, yeah, he told me later he got pinned on the bottom, and I mean, it was just wild out there. And Billy came up on the ski, and he was had so much adrenaline going. And Greg was telling me, I think Billy's like barely. Uh, might have passed out. I don't know. He looks like he's going to be okay, but it was getting pretty wild, and that was a pretty tense moment. Here's a here's a nice tow in ride. You can tell the the guys who are comfortable will will let go of the rope nice and early because you want to you want to time the drop really well. And when you have good equipment and you're feeling it, you you want to go let go early. Look at that barrel, amazing wave. Um, wow. You want to you want to take the drop with the wave and um and, and sort of let go really early with lots of speed and um like right here he whips them nicely and then you can kind of figure out where to go look at the size of the bumps on this thing it's a it, it it looks so clean with that wind but i can tell you that is a really bumpy wave snips can you tell who that is by chance i, I couldn't really tell um it looks a little bit like maybe makua if he's over there um looked a little bit like makua style this looks like ian walsh again for sure um yeah, Ian's really been um, coming on strong the last two years. I feel like he's uh, sort of hitting his peak and his prime as a big wave surfer. His fitness, his equipment, his mindset seems like he, uh, you know, I think he wants to be the, the alpha male out there. He's seen kind of what Billy's done and Kai, and I feel like he's he's due to win that event. Um, the paddle event when it happens again and i and i notice he's been towing nazare on the big days and chasing chasing all the way at mavericks he's gotten some bombs the last couple of days so he's really uh stepped up into one of those premier 
spots as as you could argue he's one of the the best if one of the best if not the best big wave surfer in the world right now yeah i would yeah i'd, I'd agree it's, it seems like he's he's obviously still he's a you know a younger guy but somewhat bridged the gap between that that initial strap crew laird and, and everybody and and then uh, you know, Kai and, and Billy and, and even some of the younger guys and gals that are coming through right now, too. And uh, I don't know, do you have a, you have a favorite, favorite guy or favorite gal to watch out here right now? Um, yeah, right now my favorite person to watch, they, I, I probably, uh, um, this isn't a surprise, but Kai Lenny's just blowing my mind. Um, he's just taking this whole thing to another level. He's performing, he's towing, he's paddling the biggest ways. What's unique about Kai at, at Jaws is he sits deep um on that outside uh, outside peak but he sits in a little bit and he just sits in the gnarliest spot i was talking to uh, tom Lowe actually the other day out at sunset and he was he was saying the same things like i'm just blown away at where kai puts himself at, at jaws and he gets so many good ones by positioning himself there but he also is taking a huge risk um but i think on a from the performance standpoint what he's doing at mavericks and nazare and jaws is I think he's he is the premier big wave surfer in the world right right now. I think um, you definitely would say Billy is the man at Jaws with with winning four times. But I think uh, around the world on all disciplines of big wave surfing, Kai has kind of stepped into that Shane Dorian conversation. Like he's he, he's the guy right now, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, he's obviously had um, a, this is a couple. This is a second very large day at. at um, at Jaws this year, but has, was blowing minds at, at Mavericks really over you know over the last couple of weeks as, as we've seen that insane run there. Um, but yeah, I, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd agree. I'd, I'd love to, to to offer a dissenting opinion, but I'd agree. And um, we'll, we'll jump into into the forecast and just have a look at uh, the actual storm that set this swell up for the Hawaiian Islands here in just a sec. And um, you know the the. The, the great thing about this, this is our, our satellite presentation of, of the storm. Um, you know, it's just that classic kind of comma shape that you love to see on, on satellite imagery. You know, there's a hurricane force low, which, you know, interestingly, we kind of have been a dime a dozen really over the last, over the last month or so. The, the good thing about this particular storm um, was it took a better track towards Hawaii. You know, Hawaii's been pumping for the last month, basically month and a half almost. Um, but this is the first really XXL swell that we've seen since the beginning of December. Um, and, and that all has to do with the, with the track of the storm. It took a better track towards Hawaii uh, versus kind of bowling over the top and being push and pushing mostly towards the West Coast. Uh, and, and there are a couple other good things about it too. So it, it moved at a speed and um, and in a direction where it, it set up what we call a captured fetch. Sometimes you call it a dynamic fetch. There's a couple different names for it. And what, what's happening there is you've got uh, where the storm is moved. The, the strongest wind in the storm remain over the strongest developing seas for a period of a day or two. That can really enhance the size of the swell, the consistency of the swell. And then it actually moved over the, a previous storm too. So it's it's not starting from scratch. You know, Sean used to always say it's like preheating an oven when that storm moves over an already excited sea state. And that's just another another thing that can really help with size and consistency. Um, you know, as we look to our, we obviously got the big swell now. As we look to our wind conditions that we, we've been speaking with, speaking to, um, we've got the breezy east southeasterly trades uh, on Maui. You know, 20 to 25 knots or so, probably much lighter wind over on Oahu, and we expect that can to continue. Um, as we move into tomorrow, though, winds lighten significantly. Um, actually, probably come light variable onshore for for Oahu, and just light and variable for for um, for Jaws. So, uh, here's our, our near shore wind model, and you can see that this is the island of Oahu. Obviously, I'm uh, kind of focusing on the north shore, just showing those lighter east southeasterly trades today. This is moving over towards Maui. And, um, and much stronger east southeast east to east winds there. But as we move towards the end of the animation here, you can see when those winds are really going to lighten up. And that's in response to a front that's going to pass to the north of Hawaii. Uh, and basically looking at kind of light, very maybe some light onshore wind overnight, but then just light variable wind in the morning. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see a little local land breeze blowing lightly offshore in the morning. So be much cleaner, smoother conditions uh, for tomorrow. The swell is still going to be sizable, dropping off, um, you know, half-ish the size of today, somewhere in that range. Um, but 
that should to really allow for some performance surfing from the paddle crew uh, on Sunday morning. So it should be pretty fun to watch. And uh, if you are just joining us, uh, welcome, aloha. Uh, this is Super Swell Saturday on Surfline. I am uh, Director of Forecasting, Kevin Wallace. I'm joined by Mike Parsons as we uh, are live from the island of Maui. We've got some incredible helicopter footage uh, for you guys to check out and surf probably in the you know 50-ish foot range on the face, maybe a little bit bigger, uh, just absolutely pumping swell. We expect it to continue to build for Maui through the remainder of the afternoon and into this evening when it's going to peak. Um, Oahu is peaking right about now, and we'll see some footage from over there uh, kind of peppered in. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking, taking a look at our Waimea cam here and there. We've seen some incredible rides on some of the, the various uh, outer reefs on Oahu too, where it's it's basically glassy. It looks a lot different than than what we're seeing here on um, on Maui. Here's our, our Waimea Bay cam. You can actually you can see outer log cabins out there in the distance too. Um, that's that's kind of way out the back there, and 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 Waimea has been pumping pretty much all day. This would be, you know, if it if it if it wouldn't have been an eddy day, it's it's super close, obviously. Um, you know, surf in the in the solid 18 to 20 foot range, Hawaiian scale. Um, back to Jaws here, and again, a lot of wind, so it's a combination of we're seeing some wind surfers, but also the, the towing crew here. Is, is you can see somebody's just been whipped in. Uh, it's a challenging conditions with this big long period swell and with all that wind. Um, so we're, we're probably not going to see anybody paddling in today. Um, you know, Snips, going back to, to the, the event, one of the, the, the fascinating things to me is, as I've worked with you and worked with the different members of, of the event crew is, is the safety and the logistics that go into safety uh, around an event. And, and not even necessarily an event, just a day like today. Um, can you speak a little bit to, to the everything that goes into the safety, the different zones and things like that at, at a spot like Jaws? Yeah, I mean, you, you, on, when the event's going on, you have you have about eight skis, and they, they develop zones, and they if one ski comes in and misses a surfer, there's another one directly behind, and, and we establish different zones to, to clear surfers and make sure there's not confusion. A lot of times in really big waves, everyone, a surfer goes down, and everyone wants to get in there and help, and sometimes it can be confusing and too many skis going after one guy and all kinds of chaos, and um, the best... Uh, big wave surfers in the world and, and these guys out there towing right now, they're they're responsible for their own safety. They bring people like, you know, um, Ian Walsh will have his brother out there. They'll have a bunch of the best Maui lifeguards. They'll have EMTs on boats. You, you can see Kai's whole crew on, on boats in there. They have radio communication um, from the cliff, from the boat. So it's it's come a long way in the, in the safety world from from when we first started doing it, it was just kind of, you put a two life vests on out there and um, and hope for the best, which was probably not the smartest thing in the world, but now with the inflatable life vest and the, and uh, you know, bringing the EMTs and the proper people out there, it's a, it's a serious game. And uh, that's why we're seeing, uh, you know, less, less people uh, coming up injured or even worse. Um, but then again, when it's really huge, it's always a, it's a pretty dangerous game. Yeah, and as we as we rotate through some of our cams here, it just moved off of Waimea. This, uh, believe it or not, is actually pipeline. Uh, it is it's basically unrecognizable. It's just washing through waves breaking way out uh, on Third Reef and and just and washing through right now. Uh, you know, none of the beautiful barrels that we've seen over the last month or so. Just uh, the swell is much much too big, uh, and it's all about the uh, the outer reefs today on Oahu, Waimea. And then obviously back here at Jaws, yeah. The the, the safety thing has been it's been interesting and and um, really cool to see that and and see see the the things that you know crews like the Big Wave Risk Assessment Group are the, the, the teaching and the education that, that they're going through and um, you know obviously it makes sense. Um, you know this is I would argue probably that the most dangerous sport in the world is big wave surfing. And, and to have the, the rescue teams in place is, um, I, I think it's, it's been essential and, and I'm positive it has saved lives over the, the last several years. Oh, no doubt. I don't think there's um, too many surfers that would argue that have, have surfed Jaws before that wouldn't say this is the, this wave is the, is the wave. It's the gnarliest wave in the world. It's the most powerful. It's 
there's just nothing in the world like it. The way that it bends around the reef and how thick it is, how hollow it is, and just how much power it has. Not only can it be the tallest wave in the world, but it also, I think, packs the most punch. Um, certainly, you can argue other waves, you know, have, have their own factors that make them maybe equally as dangerous, like Mavericks for me with the rocks and the different factors there. But I don't think there's anywhere in the world as powerful as Jaws. And um, yeah, it's just it's just an absolute miracle of a place. And um, it, it, I feel lucky to have been able to surf it. And, um, you know, it's just it's just a special place. Yeah, this is, this is a, a, a cool view looking obviously back towards land. You can see the Vela Gulch there, which um, does help, sh you know, help create this wave. Essentially, you get uh, freshwater runoff coming out of this, this canyon and, and that inhibits coral reef growth and can also uh, erode away at, at uh, volcanic rock, which uh, Hawaiian, Hawaiian Islands are, are, are volcanic in nature. And so you get what's happened is you've got this kind of this reef shelf next to a deep water canyon. Um, and that's the, the magic that makes this wave work. And just like any big wave spot in the world, something cool is going on underwater. You know, the, the bathymetry or the, um, the underwater topography is what's creating these types of waves. You know, whether it's, it's kind of this, this deep water canyon and shelf like we have here at Jaws, whether it's, you know, this gi a giant deep water canyon like we have at Nazare uh, or shelf at Mavericks. Something, something interesting it was going on underneath the water, and, and that's why these spots can produce waves and, and hold waves with good shape. Uh, you know, in the case of, of Jaws, uh, should be able to have good shape, you know, rideable shape on, on waves of up to around 80 to 90 feet before it closes out. Um, and to, to the best of my knowledge, we've never had a swell that's that closed out at Jaws, but I may be forgetting something somewhere along the way. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember a swell that I've ever seen uh, close out of Jaws. The Jaws, the reef is so incredible because uh, a lot of people compare it to like a, a you know fifty foot bee land, um, and it's it's a it's just a perfect reef. It, it you see that wave barely going by there. It just uh, it can really handle a lot of swell. It looks like there's a fair bit of west in the swell today, Kevin. The way it's the way it's pretty hollow on the inside is. Um, what's the primary direction of this swell for here? Yeah, we're about peak direction is, is right around 320 to 325 degrees, um, which is, um, as you mentioned, what will happen a lot of times when you got a, a swell from that direction is, is, it, is it really bends in and gets hollow on that inside West Bowl. Um, you know, when you get a swell that's, that's more north, it'll, it'll stand up a little, could stand up maybe potentially a little bit taller on the outside. Um, but it's, it's not as gnarly and you're not getting that like horseshoe bend to it as, as much as um, you are on those westerly swells. And, you know, Jaws in, in general and Maui in general really is, is really interesting. Just like the rest of the one islands, you, you've got to have really kind of specific swell directions for enough energy to, um, to not enough energy to get, get around, but uh, well, yeah, enough energy to get around, um, say like the offshore islands like Molokai or even kind of the, the Maui head as you look out to the east. Um, it's got to have enough north in it so you're not getting blockage from the islands there. Um, but you do like to have a little bit of west in it, especially you know, a guy like Albie Larry loves to have those, those the charge on those west bowls and, and just you know, take off right under the hook and get barreled. Um, so yeah, this well is, is kind of a, a fairly standard direction, about 325 degrees, 320, 325 degrees. Um, so enough, enough north in the swell, so there's, there's really no island shadowing from, from Molokai, um, but still enough west, so we're seeing things go really square on that west bowl at times. Yeah, it looks like I got a feeling a few of the guys are pacing themselves right now with, with the wind out there and uh, taking breaks and, and just watching a little bit. On these types of days, you really got to pace yourself. One, one bad wipeout can kind of wreck your whole day. Um, so uh, these guys are pretty savvy forecasters now, too. I know they communicate closely with, with you and stuff, but um, they're watching the buoys. They have the timing and they're they're pacing their day around when when they think the biggest, uh, at least a few of them are going, I want to be out there when this thing peaks and, and get the wave of my life. That's what a swell like this one can produce. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I, you, you touch on something that, that's interesting and in, in that I think big wave surfers tend to be the best forecasters. 
um, because it's it's so important and these types of swells are so fleeting and you know just a little change in you know something whether it's the the track of the storm or the strength of the storm uh, can absolutely make or break a session so you know working with with guys like you with Pete Mel was was always super sharp with his forecasting um, just big, I think big wave surfers in general um, really know their stuff um, so it, it it makes my job easier a lot of times um, to, to, to be able to communicate and talk about some of this forecasting stuff and, and be able to speak the same same language, so to speak. Yeah, look at this set of wire, man, that's a bomb. It's, uh, yeah, interesting to see the outer logs in the background and how clean it is. Um, I saw uh, a couple of feeds on Instagram earlier of a couple of closeout sets at, at YMA this morning, so we'll uh, see if we get a few more of those as we go back over to the jaws here and see the wind and uh yeah like i said a lot of these guys have have uh, all their equipment on paddle boards on boats tow boards i've noticed um a lot of guys this morning going out were were bringing tow boards you know obviously anticipating the size and the wind it's kind of weird how um or interesting i should say how tow surfing is making a little bit of a comeback right now um i think and that speaks to all the swell we've had obviously the last couple years at nazare it's it's been huge and guys have been towing a lot, but you haven't seen as much towing at Mavericks or at, at Jaws. And this year you're starting to see it sort of surface again. And like I said, I think that speaks to how much surf we've had. It's just been a ridiculous run of really big waves. And we even saw guys, a lot of guys towing Mavericks uh, the other afternoon on a pretty special day. It looked like it moved out uh, outside the regular takeoff spot. And that the photo of Pete Bell is just, I mean, ridiculously big. and so cool to see him uh, do that and and his paddle wave was unbelievable which we're looking at right here this, this has to be one of the most uh, incredible rides ever in surf and he got in on the chip outside and this almost goes down there and just bottom turns right under the hood and stands up in a 40 foot barrel and that was unbelievable so cool to see pete um get that wave he's he's basically dedicated his life to him mavericks or a, or a huge part of his life out there and um to see him get the wave of the winter out there maybe i mean maybe not the wave of the winter we'll see what happens with the other breaks but certainly to this point that's got to be a contender that's going to be a tough one to beat <laughs> yeah yeah and to have, his, uh, have, his son, have his son right there in the channel on the ski and his son uh towed him into the huge wave uh, a few days after this one yeah the, that moment right there you, you, every once in a while you get you know one or two of those waves that you, you know that lasts a lifetime and uh, he's soaking it in right there jamie mitchell paddling over to congratulate him and you know kind of knowing the magnitude of that ride like that's something you'll never forget for the rest of your life so for you for you what what was that way or what were those waves uh for me i had i had um two or three i probably had three rides i had two at cortez and one at jaws the the 2002 wave at jaws i was in a contest um, and uh, that um, it's the opening scene of the Billabong Odyssey and um, it was before drones and the helicopter was backing up um, and I was looking up going holy smokes the helicopter is so close here and that was the best ride of my life where I got a nice uh, big barrel at Jaws and kind of got blown through the barrel and felt felt myself lifted into the air and kicked out of the way or I straightened off and got blasted but I was through the the hard part that was the ride of my life for sure in 2002 and then uh and i had two at cortez uh um and and those were both um pretty special rides one was in step into liquid it's the first time i surfed with pete bell and skin dog out there and me and brad and that was probably the best uh, day of my life ever surfing uh in 2001 and then um the other one was uh at cortez as well i got the biggest wave of my life um snuck out there with greg long and twiggy and brad again so those three waves i'll, I'll never forget anything about them and you can those are the ones where you you kick out and you just go okay I'm, I'm, i'll remember everything about that forever and uh that that wave of pete bell is certainly one of those where he's going to look back uh, a lot of years from now and remember all the little nuances and everything that happened on that wave because it's uh it's not every day you line up a 50-foot wave at mavericks paddling and get barrel get a stand-up barrel it's it's so hard to do just to be in position and 
and find that kind of wave and then execute it perfectly, it's um it's almost impossible. So that's why that's you know why you saw his reaction. He, he knows that the magnitude of that ride. Yeah, that was um, yeah. It's, just, it's incredible that we've seen Pete get two of the best waves of what the last two decades at least anyway within <laughs> a week of each other too, or a few days of each other. Maybe not even a week, something like that. Yeah, um, which is pretty well. Unbelievable. Um, well, uh, if you if you guys are just joining us, guys and gals are just joining us. This is Super Swell Saturday on Surfline. I am Director of Forecasting Kevin Wallace. And we are coming to you live from the Hawaiian Islands where we have giant swell, uh, biggest swell of the year so far that's uh, filled in throughout the day today. And uh, we are live from a few different spots for here. Uh, this is uh, on the island of Maui at Jaws where it's huge and it's windy and we've got a helicopter uh, taking in all the action. Uh, just wanna give a special shout out to, to Mike Prickett and Josh Quick from Salt and Air who partnered with us here at Surfline to bring you this live feed from Jaws. Uh, you know, Mike actually helped design the shot over, which is mounted on the front of the chopper and is keeping the camera stable. So uh, amazing technology right there. We're, we're super stoked to be able to present it here live on Surfline. And, and uh, as I'm joined by uh, Mike Snips Parsons, um, we're just having fun talking about the waves, talking about this incredible run of waves uh, that we've seen in the North Pacific over geez, just about the last six weeks. It kicked off with a swell, not quite of this magnitude, but a very strong swell for Hawaii uh, that hit the islands. I think it was either December 2nd or December 3rd, something like that. Uh, and it's pretty much been nonstop since then. Uh, Hawaii, uh, it, you know, more or less being bookended by these two really big swells in between was more in the large to XL variety. Um, but moving over to the West Coast, we've had a number of days that were anywhere from XL to giant and as big as it's been in years and years and years. Um, you know, the, the swell that hit Mavericks on uh, Sunday the 10th um, was at probably as big as it's been in, in 20 years anyway. That's some of the feedback we've gotten and that was one of many. Uh, it was an incredible two week run at Mavericks. I've been at Surfline and forecasting for uh, just about 21 years, so a little shy of that. And that's the best run of waves uh, that I can remember. Um, best two week run of waves that I can ever remember at Mavs, that is for sure. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, it was um, it was weird with um, the, maybe you could speak to this, Kevin, but the La Nina thing was, we were all kind of bummed and talking uh, amongst a lot of the surfers, like, hey, what's this year gonna be like? It's definitely, uh, everyone is falling into a La Nina. I don't think we're gonna get many big swells and then, and then here you go. We've had the North Pacific just go crazy. What's that? Did, did you it's been as good that? as it's ever been. Yeah. You know, yeah. No. It, 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 when yeah, when you look at the historical stuff, um, you know, say La Nina versus El Nino, there's there's pretty strong signals, or there's I should say there's very strong signals um, for strong or very strong El Ninos and above average surf to well above average surf and, and especially like on a kind of like an XL to XXL scale. Um, as you, you know, weaker to moderate El Ninos, it's, it's kind of all over the place. And La Ninas are kind of like that too, where um, it can be feast or famine. Um, we've had some good La Nina years. We've had some really bad La Nina years. Um, this one obviously falls into the former. Um, it's been from a, from a, a a big wave perspective, it's as good as it's been for quite a while, that's for sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it, right? But so um, it's funny because yeah. uh, Jamie was texting me the other day and we were talking, we were saying, What's up with this La Nina? We were both kind of laughing, going, I don't mind these La Ninas if they're going to give us waves like this. It's just been, <laughs> been to All see. Right. Uh, Hawaii's been amazing, and then the, the, the run we've had in California and all of Northern Cal, all the way down to the tip of Baja, we just had pumping surf. So it's been quite a quite a January. And going back in, in history and thinking about it, I just um, what I what I've always noticed is at least for California, um, first couple weeks of January are are the best. Um, and I don't know, you know, without having all the data, but it just seems like condition-wise and swell-wise, it's, you know, a lot of the the magic swells have happened in that in that from right at the end of December through mid-January timeframe. 
Yeah, absolutely. So like Hawaii, for sure, the climatology is, is really clear that the, you know, the, the largest surf of the year happens end of December, beginning of January. Um, and we're at a, we're at essentially peak on the West Coast too in, in January. And um, you get a lot of days where it's similar to what we're seeing today on the West Coast where we're under high pressure, it's warm, it's sunny, it's light winds. Uh, so all those elements come together, but you know, you'd be, especially if you're going to a west facing break somewhere on the, on the west coast you'd be pretty hard pressed to, to to find a better month and you know better kind of couple week stretch than you would in in uh, in early january early you know really any time in january it, it'll shift around a little bit on like when that high sets up and and when it's going to be best but uh it's a it's a nice time of year to to, to be a surfer either in hawaii or, or on the west coast yeah no doubt Cool. Well, I think we've, we've got a little bit of a break here in the action, so we're going to take a commercial and we'll be right back. It's more fine tuned for good waves, and I kind of just kind of made that trust up. And once I had that, there's kind of no going back. Welcome back, aloha. I am Surfline Director of Forecasting, Kevin Wallace. Uh, we are here on a super swell Saturday, XXL swell, slamming the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, it's been building throughout the day today, uh, peaking this afternoon for most zones. We are live from the island of Maui here, uh, checking in at Jaws with uh, some insane live helicopter footage. Uh, we'll be checking in on Oahu, both Waimea and some of the outer reefs as we move through uh, the next little bit. And I'm also joined by Big Wave Charger, former Big Wave Tour Commissioner, Mike Parsons, and we are just chatting waves. And, um, you know, Mike, it's, uh, it's just been this incredible run in the North Pacific lately. It's, it's uh, I don't know if I'm gonna say it's 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 culminated in this, but uh, we're, we're still going, um, but it's been kind of cool to see, we saw things kick off in Hawaii about six weeks ago. December, beginning of December, we saw a swell that was not quite this big, but uh, very large in the Hawaiian Islands and actually kind of similar conditions too, where it's breezy on Jaws and, and really light wind on Oahu. Um, we've got another great one here. So uh, it's, it's, it's nice to be sitting here with you uh, talking surf. It's nice to not be stressing about it too much. Most of the time over the years, we were talking about trying to call contests on at Jaws. And so to just enjoy it here is, is a real pleasure. Yeah, it is. It's been a heck of a year, and it's um, it's unreal to see uh, what all the guys and girls are doing now in big ways. How it's progressing. Um, what the women have been doing has been awesome. I uh, with um, like Andrea Mahler towing in out there with what Paige Holmes has been doing. Um, Justine Dupont. The other day we saw her get an amazing wave at Mavericks. Keala Kenley being invited into the Eddy. So um, Bianca. Uh, Valentine getting a couple big waves at Mavericks the other day, so it's great to see the girls progressing. Um, um, the guys have just been through the roof with what they're doing nowadays. Um, I don't think there'll be a contest this year at Jaws, but hopefully that returns again next year. And um, it's just fun to watch how much the big wave stuff is progressing as we take a peek back here at Waimea. We saw some huge sets here earlier in the day. Hopefully we see another one of those crazy sets come through. and. Um, 
Yeah, I think uh, you said earlier, Kevin, this might have been a good um, eddy day. Is that because I noticed the storm, uh, some of the peak wind speeds came within like a thousand miles of the island. And I always remember Sean saying why a man needs those storms that get really close. And I, I think the big outer log cabins day with Ken Bradshaw's wave was one of those types as well. Yeah, um, right on. It's, you know, Waimea is kind of, is somewhat unique in the, like the, amongst big waves in that it, um, it doesn't really maximize things on super long period swells. You know, a spot like, a spot like Jaws or, uh, which we see here on screen from, from the helicopter, um, or a spot like Nazare, which, you know, they, they love the long period and they're going to be biggest when it's really long period. Um, Waimea actually prefers a swell that's slightly shorter period um, because on those really long period swells uh, you actually get energy that's pulled away, refracted and focused at outer log cabins, um, which we can, we'll actually be able to see as we move back to our, our Waimea cam. But um, I mean, this is insane view here too, just uh, well up above Jaws. You can see the, the, the teams towing in into surf that's, you know, in the probably 50 foot plus range whatever it is, a lot of wind, obviously. So we got a lot of wind surfers and kite surfers out there uh, absolutely tearing it up. How's that? That thing just spit its guts out too. Um, but you know, Waimea really loves a big deep, just a big swell, um, uh, meaning like it for, for an eddy type of day to happen, you really need a, a swell size that's above 15 feet and preferably, you know, 20 feet or so uh, for it to reach that, you know, it, it's gotta be 20 foot, uh, Hawaiian throughout the day, which translates to roughly 30 to 40 foot bases. And for Waimea to do that, uh, it needs about 20 feet of swell to be able to produce that type of surf. You know, Jaws, on the other hand, is really interesting in that you could have a 10 foot swell that's super long period, you know, 20 seconds plus, and it's going to produce 40 foot plus waves. Um, it just, it's able to maximize that long period energy and focus that long period energy and, and turn, a, you know, a a relatively modest sized swell, 10 foot swell into huge surf. Um, today we have a little, we have a mixture of both. We've got a big swell uh, and we also, it's also a very long period, although that period's starting to transition down just a little bit on Oahu now. But, you know, looking at, at some of our buoy observations, buoy one, which is a really great indicator uh, of, of timing and size for the Hawaiian Islands. It's about half a day away from Maui, depending on the exact swell direction and swell period. Uh, and a couple hours less than that, eight-ish hours or so uh, for Oahu. It peaked, um, got a couple different peaks early, early this morning, one around 1.40, another one around 6 to 7 a.m. Uh, and it peaked in like the, the 19 to 22 foot range at uh, between 17 and 20 seconds. So obviously a, a very large swell, um, uh, long period too. But with the, the swell period coming down, I think we'll, we'll see some, some big waves again here this afternoon for, for, for Waimea. This would be a borderline uh, eddy swell, in my opinion. It's, it's, um, uh, there have been some 20 foot sets for sure. When, you know, anytime we hear about a, a closeout set at, at the bay, um, at Waimea Bay, that's in excess of 20 feet, pushing up towards 25 feet. Uh, and you can see off in the distance there, that is outer log cabins that's, that's feathering away. So uh, a few, few waves out that way. We saw a couple tow teams out uh, early this morning and just pristine conditions on Oahu. We've got very light east southeasterly winds are, um, and uh, as clean and, and, uh, and pretty and big and blue as, as it could be. Yeah, incredible as well. And, and um, just with that period, you see those big stacked up long lines. And um, like at, at PI, when those, when those um, or jaws, whichever you like to call it, when you see those sets marching in, there's nothing, nothing quite like it. They're stacked to the horizon. And um, from up on the cliff, um, uh, watching from there is an incredible view What, how far out you can see the sets coming. And, What's, what's crazy about towing at, um, at Jaws is sometimes you're so far out and you're, you're approaching a wave um, from the outside, which is so different than when you're paddle surfing it because you're, sometimes you really can't tell the size wave you're on. You're going, you know it's big and you feel the energy, but it's hard sometimes to see the difference and then you let go of that rope and it, it stands up underneath you and, and um, you're like, wow, I'm look behind you and you're on a really really big wave but it's uh it's really different than paddle surfing for that aspect if you're entering the wave from way outside 
Yeah, I know it's it's interesting. So that that wave of yours that you got in two thousand two that that was during the the tow event is a great example of that. Um, you know, I think it's I think you mentioned it's it's the the opening scene of the Billabong Odyssey, um, or was it Step Into Liquid? One of one of those, right? Yeah, it was um, the opening scene of the Billabong Odyssey. Um, but yeah, you just you. That one, when we uh, we were towing into it, I could tell. Um, and when I saw Makua Rothman get his uh, wave that he won, the biggest wave um, one of the years at, at Jaws, I think it was a 68-footer or 70-foot or wave. It was crazy huge. And uh, I, I knew that one was huge when I saw him towing into it. Uh, but sometimes you, you're, you're on a swell and you just don't know. And then it jacks up when it hits the reef. And, you know, like a place like Jaws, it amplifies so much. Um, and uh, sometimes the ones you're not quite sure, or you're sitting outside on the ski and you hear everyone scream and someone gets blown out of a barrel. Um, I remember Garrett McNamara's crazy tube at Jaws. Um, it was it was kind of a inside one, and it just doubled up into a perfect sixty foot wave on the shelf, and he got spit out of the tube. And it was one of the best rides uh, ever at Jaws, and it didn't even look like a set wave. Huh. Just hit that, hit yeah. that inside ball, west ball perfectly, huh? Yeah, it really did. So it's it's uh, it's tricky like that at Jaws for sure. Um, paddling, on the other hand, you, you definitely know what's approaching you, which is um, paddling Jaws is just insane to me. It's so the playing field is so big, and the bigger sets move out, and it's um, if you're going to sit in a position where where you're going to get waves, you're probably going to get caught. So. Um, Makes it really, really radical to paddle for that, for that aspect, for that sense. So, what's it? Have you have you taken a, a bad wipeout at Jaws before? Um, I have. I I um I went left um, toe surfing and then kicked out and then was paddling my toe board and got sucked over the falls and then uh, it's really gnarly in there on the on the left. You you got to be careful um, when you kick out that that. Uh, that you pick the right wave or that someone's there to pick you up on a really big day because you can get pushed into that corner where the rocks are. I got pushed in there and and it was a pretty wild ride. It was like Laird says, it's you got to enjoy the ride after the ride. I definitely was was doing that over there. Um, and uh, one of the local guys actually came in and found me. It was, it was one of the scarier moments of my life for sure, um, getting pushed into that corner. Because really, there's big boulders behind you at Jaws and to, to like get out of the water, you're going to get blown up on those rocks. You, you know, you see where those skis get blasted onto the cliff there. Um, and the deeper you like are right over now. by the rock, it's even gnarlier. So it's uh, it's pretty scary in there on that in, inside corner to the left. Yeah, we, we've got um, uh, a, a ski that's been washed up into the rocks, not off not off the left, but um, kind of off the off the right. Hopefully, everyone looks like everyone is okay. Um, but certainly some some carnage here that we can see on the screen uh, with that that ski washing in and and uh, surfers and or uh, this rescue crew, crew uh, trying to do what they can. I don't know if they can. Uh, you know, I don't know what the, the protocol here is. Um, if you you try and push back off the rock, wait for a little white water to, to come in, and you push back off the rocks or not. But uh, not a not a fun no. situation to be in here. No. Um it's so radical in there. I mean, you saw the footage of Kai Lenny earlier this year on the windy day when he you know, got his hand hurt in the lanyard on the ski, and you don't want to be stuck in there. When when you when your ski gets near those rocks, you just want to get away from it. Um, it's super treacherous in there, and uh, not a lot you can do when your ski's going towards the rocks in there. You just got to stay clear. Um, one of the it's super scary even to even to paddle out from there when guys jump in and paddle from there you got to time it right and a day like today it's it's radical when you're entering or exiting the water from in there yeah it looks it looks so pristine pulled back from you know i, I don't know a couple hundred feet now uh but it 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 um it looks a lot cleaner than it actually is as we as we zoom in here obviously you can see that wind and the oh gosh the challenging conditions uh, that are on offer here were probably I don't know 20 to 25 knot wind pretty easily, um, if not a little stronger than that. You know, now he's one of the windiest places on earth, and and Jaws fits the bill. So uh, crazy conditions here uh, with this big swell. 
and we've got uh, someone up and surfing just doing big carving like snowboard snowboard type turns here yeah it's incredible that what uh, the control you have with um with the tow boards and being strapped in it is i do use that analogy a lot it's like snowboarding it's it's crazy the control um and nowadays a lot of the guys are even on the paddleboard they're going to full traction on their front foot um and on the on the but being strapped in you've got traction and you've got the straps and it's amazing the the control with the bumps all of a sudden you're like okay i can do this where um as paddling obviously you're feeling every last bump and toe surfing you're just kind of flying across them and 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 you can hop over bumps you can read them you see some of the stuff guys doing full rotations on them off bumps and you can you know that's the the fun part about being strapped in the bummer about being strapped in is when you when you eat it in the barrel or you go over the falls and your feet are in those straps, it, it can break your ankles or break your, uh, it occasionally your foot can slide through the strap and cause all kinds of problems. So when you straighten off, the first thing you want to do is try to slide your feet out of the straps before, before impact, you know, and, and get, get clear, get your feet out of those straps. So it's in the old days, um, Laird and, um, I used to wear the heel straps the same as, as he did. And that gave you just ridiculous control, but but it was also like a disaster when you pulled into the barrel because you couldn't get out of your straps. So you basically would just tumble and roll with your board attached to you like like a snowboard, which was, was never a good thing. Yeah, I mean that's truly that's like a, it's a binding essentially at that point uh, with the with the double straps, man. And so you yeah. mentioned earlier that the that the, the tow boards are around twenty pounds or so. What the the length is is it typically like under six feet or around six feet? I, I mean I know it's going to depend a little bit on the surfer, but um, like yeah, short yeah, and narrow, I, right? Right in that zone of, of the six foot range, you see like Ian's board today will probably be a. Uh, between 5'11 and 6'1. Um, when we, in the early days of towing, we, Laird was probably riding a 6'6 a six, six or 6'8. Six, we even had like seven foot tow boards for a while, but that was, you just don't need that much board. Nowadays, most of these guys and girls would be on a, a six foot board somewhere in the 20, you know, 16 to 24 pound range, depending. There's also a lot of factors with where you put the weight with. There's tons of stuff in the fins with, with, with um, oils on the fins, what size fins. There's been um, some of the more uh, sort of exciting advancements in, in, in big wave surfing has been around fins and what people are using. So continues to evolve for sure. Uh, you've noticed on the on the big wave paddle boards, guys are going to, to thicker boards with uh, flatter rockers. They're, able to paddle into bigger and bigger waves yet still control them most of the top guys and girls are riding four fins although some still go to a three fin because it gives you that little bit more of a a stable feeling off the bottom but then you don't have the speed whereas the four fin gives you just that crazy speed and at a wave like jaws when you pull into the barrel you you want that speed it's that wave is moving so fast and you're trying to match that speed so for me, I always like the feeling of a, of a four pin of Jaws. Well, we've got, uh, this is a good segue. We, we've got a, a, a user question. Gina from Maine wonders, uh, Mike, do you still chase big waves or is it more coaching duties now? Or is it a little, maybe a little bit of both? It's definitely a little bit of both. I love chasing big waves still. I like Totos. I like, um, Waves like that. I'm definitely not uh, chasing waves all over the world. At, say, say a place like Nazare when a swell pops up, I'm I'm happy to sit sit home and, and watch those ones. Um, I do love big waves. It never goes away. You never lose the the uh, the sort of um, allure, and, and they get me super excited. But I definitely, you know, I got a 12 year old son now, and I'm having a blast and loving coaching, and I love doing that. So. Not not chasing every single swell anymore, but still trying to challenge myself, but not at these guys and gals level. Yeah, and you're getting hopefully you've been getting a few waves at home lately too. Yeah. It's uh, you know, all the surf that's been hitting Hawaii has also been hitting California, and hey, we've got more on the way. Like you know, this swell is coming to California too. Um, we've got we've got a swell that's building today in California. Actually, um, it's another kind of maverick day today. Not not as big as what we've seen. 
Um, but Mavericks is breaking again, which is like, I feel like the 30th time in the last 30 days or something like that. Um, and we've got, uh, you know, th this wall that's, that's filling in over the weekend. Um, and then we've got the swell that we're seeing now on screen uh, here at Jaws on Oahu. This swell is going to be impacting California early next week on Monday and Tuesday. Also looks like we could see a very strong Santa Ana wind event. Um, so strong offshore flow for Southern California on Tuesday, uh, potentially strong offshore flow for much of Northern California on Monday and Tuesday as well. So uh, this incredible run of waves that we've seen over the last month is not over. Uh, we've got more on the way. Uh, beyond this next this next little run of well, that's when things it does look like finally are going to start to change. So wouldn't be a bad idea to go out and, and get waves over the next few days. Uh, you know, obviously you can check the, the, the surf line forecast for all the details on, on what's coming up. And we'll transition back here to Waimea Bay on Oahu. Uh, this is one of our live cams on the site. As a user, as a uh, Surfline subscriber, you can watch this cam to your heart's content, which is pretty cool on a day like today. Um, set it up. I actually like to set it up, plug it into um, my big screen TV at home. There's a few different ways you can do that. We actually have an article on the site um, you can, it shows you how to, to, to do that. But it's a pretty nice way to, to end the day is, is plug in one of the Hawaii cams, watch a sunset, and uh, just sit back and relax and, and, uh, and watch a surf. It's still pumping here on Oahu too. Um, you know, we're moving over here to Pipeline, which is, uh, as I mentioned a couple times before, pretty much unrecognizable. It's just uh, huge and washing through. Uh, all the near shore spots on the North Shore are completely maxed out. Uh, the swell is just way too big. It's, it's um, all about uh, going offshore and those outer reefs offshore, Waimea Bay, and then obviously Jaws on Maui too. And, and we've seen just incredible conditions on Oahu all day today. We've seen um, you know, really probably what you might call historic rides at some of the outer reefs. And we'll have footage of that coming up um, somewhere down the line in, in this broadcast, but uh, just conditions and size about as good as it gets uh, on Oahu this afternoon uh, with this big swell with the light trades. And uh, it's, yeah, it's just an amazing day of surfing, big and blue and clean and, and uh, about as perfect as, as you'd want, especially when you can watch from the, but like for a guy like me, you can watch from the safety of your computer. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It's been, uh, it's been awesome. To, I do the same thing. I have a, uh, put the cameras up on a big screen TV. It's just amazing the technology nowadays and what you can, what you can do checking the surf all around the world. It's, it's pretty awesome. And, uh, this, the, this helicopter footage has been incredible from from Jaws, just the technology there, and being able to being able to see the wave approach from from that angle is just nuts. Yeah, we've got a we're, we're here back to Waimea Bay. This is a pretty good sized set that's just rolling through now. A couple of riders uh, seems like a lot of waves at Waimea tend to be party waves, um, but we've you know it's been a, a very solid day of surf at Waimea. We saw a couple of closeout sets. Uh, earlier this morning, or, or kind of around late this morning, I should say, earlier today, late this morning, uh, and, and got reports of you know, really big waves on the outer reefs, 25-foot Hawaiian, which is you know, 45, 50-foot faces, uh, and just, again, just beautiful conditions. Um, uh, you know, just, just looking at the this, this storm a little bit that, that created this swell, uh, you know, was, um, we've, we've seen a ton of surf over the last month for Hawaii. Um, but this is this is the biggest of them all, and really, it's, it's the biggest since uh, we saw things kick off uh, at the beginning of December. We'll have a look at what this storm actually looked like on the satellite animation. Uh, you can see it's just that classic comma shape. Those kind of popcorn-looking clouds are an indication of very strong wind that's blowing over the surface of the ocean. You know, in this case, we had a hurricane force wind. Um, that was really well aimed at uh, the Hawaiian Islands, and it was close. It was, you know, 1,500 miles away. I think we had big seas to almost 50 feet that were about within a thousand miles of Hawaii. So that's a, a massive, massive storm, and uh, just huge surf that has resulted. Uh, northwest swell, long period around 325 degrees. So, um, you know, that's that's a pretty standard swell direction for this time of year. Uh, and that means that there's no shadowing for jaws. Jaws can be shadowed on, on certain swells uh, that come uh, out of the west-northwest. You've got shadowing from the island of Molokai. 
um, for the North Shore. Everything is pretty much lit up. And you, as you can see here, we, there's another swell coming uh, beginning of next week. That swell does look a lot, a lot smaller. Actually, it's going to have um, poor winds, um, onshore winds out of the north, it looks like, too. So uh, take it while you can get it. Uh, keep an eye on these cams here and uh, you can see the the wind conditions for oahu uh, basically ideal today with, uh, straight offshore out of the east southeast um, over on maui much stronger trades um, breezy out of the east trending east southeast but you know, the, the interesting thing is as we move into tomorrow overnight tonight into tomorrow we have a uh, front that's going to pass to the north of the hawaiian islands that's uh, going to make the winds lighten significantly um, and so Heading into tomorrow morning, we should really see some um, some good paddle waves out of Jaws. The swell is going to be dropping off, but still a lot of energy and much, much, much lighter winds. So it uh, should be pretty fun to watch. We're back here live uh, as Waimea Bay on the north shore of Oahu. Off in the distance, you can actually see some sets uh, feathering out at uh, outer log cabins there. And uh, it's been a little bit slow over the last little while, but we I uh, do expect things to pulse again through this afternoon and, and over on Maui, this swell should be building uh, through the remainder of the day and into this evening as well. Uh, so just uh, been basically pumping all day. We expect it to continue pumping through the uh, the rest of the day and and um, some pretty good size leftovers on Sunday morning with, with very light wind and buttery conditions on Maui. Uh, and we'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Surfline lead forecaster John Thorne. Welcome to the mechanics of Piahi, or the more commonly known name of Jaws, a big wave powerhouse located on the north coast of Maui. First, let's start with the swell source. With Hawaii located way out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, the door is wide open for the northern hemisphere's winter storms to deliver plenty of swell. These areas of low pressure are more prominent and strongest from October through April, with January as the peak month, and the swell travel time could take anywhere from one to five days. For a spot like Piahi to come to life, you need those winter storms to pack a lot of wind, ideally reaching 40 to 50 knots or more. Basically, the stronger, bigger, and longer lasting the wind fetch is, the stronger, bigger, and longer lasting the swell will be. And if that fetch takes a favorable jaunt towards the islands, then it will greatly assist in maximizing swell potential and consistency. Furthermore, you also want the fetch to be within the swell window for jaws, so it swells more north of 300 degrees that clear the east side of Molokai. However, the ideal swell window for this wave to break properly is from around 305 degrees west-northwest to around 350 degrees north-northwest. The more westerly angled swells tend to be more vertical and hollow, while the more northerly angled swells tend to be a little bit more mellow but with the lines staying more open as they wrap in. However, keep in mind that swell size and period will also play a role with that. This clip of Shane Dorian's XXL Wave of the Year from October 2012 was a long period northwest swell from around 315 to 335 degrees that topped out on buoy 1 with around 15 feet at 17 seconds. Now, what makes this particular spot so big and perfect? Well, that will be the underwater landscape. Starting with the unique configuration of the offshore bathymetry, incoming swell is refracted and directed towards this section of coast. However, the real magic is the local bathymetry. Jaws is a classic setup of deeper channel with an adjacent shallower reef, just like many breaks in Hawaii and around the world. But this is on a much larger scale than most, with a pairing of an underwater ridge next to a deep canyon. The approaching swell line will focus on the underwater ridge and slow down, centering itself and leaving the faster moving edges of the swell line to wrap around. With the steep drop off to deep water just west of the ridge, as well as the precise cut of this canyon with the slight left hook, the swell energy will refract towards a much shallower water over the ridge, pushing back onto itself. Swell refraction happens on the east side as well, around a 30 to 40 foot depth where the larger swells break. The compression of this energy will push the wave up to a peak, amplifying it to 2 to 3, even 4 times the deep water swell height. But that also depends on exact swell size, period, and direction. After the peak, the left will eventually square up too much with the reef and lose shape. However, the more westerly swells will offer an occasional good left. Meanwhile, the right will grind off around the western edge of the ridge, maintaining a bowl shape that stays open and offers a heaving barrel, especially on the more westerly swells and once the wave moves over the 20-foot depth. And finally, all you need now are good conditions. The prevailing easterly trade winds are okay most of the time, but things can get quite bumpy out there on the stronger and more northeasterly trades. The ideal setup is when a front approaches and the wind lightens or blows from the southeast or south, and obviously any stronger onshore wind would be unfavorable. Well, once again, this is Surfline Lee Forecaster, Jonathan Warren. I'd like to say mahalo for listening to this mechanics video of Pihahi. Aloha. 
there's some women that have been charging so hard for so long and they've just never been in the spotlight. And I think it's great for us to have this uh, event to just encourage each other and to all get a chance to get out there and have fun and show what we can do. The Red Bull Magnitude is the first of its kind, all female, digital, big wave event. They'll all be vying for a $40,000 prize purse for best performer, runner up, biggest wave, and best wave. of Hawaii, uh, we can see macking surf here at Waimea Bay. This is the Surfline Cam, uh, one of the Surfline Cams at Waimea Bay. It's been pumping all day. Uh, it's really come on uh, basically from kind of the late morning through the afternoon and uh, just seeing some incredible action out there. Um, surf running in the you know 18 to 20 foot range, uh, that's Hawaiian scale uh, for, for the North Shore of Oahu, so getting reports of sets up to 25 feet uh, with some of the outer reefs. The, the normal spots totally washed out, but as you can see, uh, spots like Waimea, those outer reefs uh, over at Jaws, it's uh, macking, it's perfect, it's going off. We've got beautiful conditions. It's just big blue and, and uh, about as clean and as good as uh, it's gonna get. Um, you know, we're, we're uh, 
the, the, the storm has uh, the storm that set this up uh, happened just a couple days ago. It's been one in a, a long run of swells that we've seen for Hawaii and, and really throughout the North Pacific over this last month to, to six weeks. Uh, this swell is on the way to California early next week. Uh, California is getting a new swell today, the same one that hit Hawaii on Thursday. Uh, so it's just been nonstop action. It's been a lot of fun to, to see all of these waves. We've actually got uh, we're We've got footage over at JAWS as well. We've got a helicopter in the air. It's, it is refueling right now, um, but we're gonna get back over to JAWS in, in just a little while. It's big, it's windy, it's gnarly over there. Uh, the North Shore looks relatively tame compared to what we're seeing at JAWS, but um, still pumping surf here. You know, this is uh, an eddy type of day. That's the, the, the size that we're actually, um, we're actually seeing here or, or really pretty close. And again, just beautiful conditions and, and overall it looks great. Uh, you know, there's been some crazy action on the outer reefs and, and Surfline's Brett Bielman has been able to send some clips from the ski. Uh, we're gonna check those out uh, in, in just a little bit as well. See some of the action out there. Um, here we go. Uh, again, one of the outer reefs on the North shore, I believe this is Mikey Wright and as big and blue and perfect as, as you can hope this to. Already it looks good. No Just way. wait. <laughs> when it hits oh this boat, my dude. god. Like from here on. Right here. Those are photos to keep. It right looks there. like cloud right from that. Those are photos to keep. Holy shit. Oh god, he almost made that bunker. <laughs> shit. Oh, go. We might tear off the turn, so. Yeah. I'm good though. Look at this oh, let's turn around. Let's turn around. Let's go. Whatever you want to do. Oh my god. What the fuck? What the fuck? Yep, yep, I got it. So we have big, set, obviously oh giant sets uh, on some of the, uh, the uh, outer reefs here. Uh, beautiful conditions. I don't even know how bad I've, I've, I've heard shit. reports of some carnage, obviously, um, with with some of these these big sets. I, I believe this was um, one of those sets that rolled through around the kind of late morning when the swell peaked on Oahu. Actually, I should see a couple different peaks on Oahu. Uh, peak number one was was late this morning. I should see another secondary peak kind of through the afternoon today, looking over towards Jaws. Um, something, we'll, we'll see a peak that'll be a little bit later on. Uh, here we're back to Waimea Bay. Um, it's pumping, it's one of those swells that, that really gets the bay going. Um, you know, it's uh, the bay, believe it or not, may not be super big on, on days where Jaws could be really big, or even some of the outer reefs on Oahu might be really big. Um, moving to pipeline here. Uh, it's just big washing through and, and totally closed out and uh, unrideable. But you know, just getting back to Waimea Bay, it's it's unique in the fact that it, it takes a, a really big swell for it to truly come alive and uh, meaning like an, a, a deep water offshore swell. Um, it needs it to be, you know, for an eddy type of day to run where it needs to be 20 foot Hawaiian throughout the day. Uh, you really need around 18 to 20 feet of deep water swell for it to, to produce those types of waves. You know, compare that to a spot like Jaws, which um, can take that long period energy, really focus it, amplify it, uh, and you could have a, a relatively modest 10 foot swell that could create, you know, pretty easily 40 to 50 foot surf if you have a very long swell period, say 20 to 22 seconds or so. So, um, you know, surf is going off uh, throughout the islands. I am also joined by Mike Parsons. A big Wave Charger, former Big Wave Tour Commissioner, um, a guy that uh, I've had the pleasure to know for, for all about just about 20 years now. We've, we've worked on different events uh, over the course of that time. Uh, always been my, my pleasure to work with him and, and uh, to learn about a lot of these these Big Wave spots too. Snips, welcome and uh, stoked to be sharing this time with you and, and just watching some insane waves. Wow, those waves on the outer reefs on the North Shore are doing their thing right now. It's a it's always a little bit stressful for these guys and girls to make a decision that's um you see the swell on the maps everyone's going oh my god where are you gonna go where are you gonna go and you're planning and you got a swell like this you have a lot of different options right you, you know you're gonna get 
giant jaws, you know you're going to deal with that wind. And then these outer reefs on the North Shore, they're a little more fickle, right, with with what you're going to get. And you never want to, as a as a big wave surfer, you want to be at the optimum spot. So making those decisions and feeling like you made a good call is uh, is is something big wave surfers live for. And it looks like those guys and girls on the outer reefs right now on Oahu might be might be the lucky ones um, because they got those conditions. They got the light east southeast winds, and you saw that incredibly huge backhand barrel um, from someone on the outer reefs there. Um, I, I'm not too sure who it was, although a pretty familiar style, but unbelievable. And you see um, some of these sets at Waimea, just incredible stuff. Definitely the biggest day at, at Waimea in a long time. And then, of course, over on Jaws. You're, you're going to get some incredible tow waves at the moment in all that wind. Yeah, so I, I uh, going back to that big barrel, I think it was John John Florence. Um, not surprised yeah, you're getting was, one of the best. <laughs> I, I was going to say John John, but I didn't want to speculate, but it sure looked like his style. And um, I know he loves that particular wave. Um, I, that, to me, looked like one of the biggest barrels ever. I mean, it was, it was actually comical looking how big that barrel was so i can't wait to see all those photos when they come out and all, and all the footage but um yeah it's funny he's um he's so he's so well versed in his surfing you know he um he wins the opening event at pipe and then um and then he can surf a 50 foot outer reef and, and ride a 10 foot board like it's a like it's a 6 as well pretty pretty amazing to watch and yeah, that's the thing that always impresses me about john john is he makes um, you know, really big waves look really easy and, you know, rides those types of waves like most of us would love to ride a head high day um, down at the local. Um, and all right, looks like our chopper is back in the air. It's been refueled. We are heading out to Jaws right now. Uh, it's, it's big, it's windy, it's wild over there. Um, the swell is building to a peak this afternoon and into this evening. Uh, we've seen some some pretty incredible waves so far this afternoon. Uh, very challenging conditions with this large, especially long period swell, and you know 20 to 25 knot plus easterly trades that are blowing side offshore. So haven't seen anybody paddle. I doubt we will see anybody attempt to. Uh, I think it's it's a it's a tow day. We've got a lot of wind surfers. We've seen a lot of wind surfers out and kite surfers. Uh, some great waves, kind of like snowboarding going on basically. Um, with with this type of size and, and and these types of conditions, and and Stips, I know you you had a lot of days out here at Jaws, um, somewhat similar, you know, at least somewhat similar to this or very similar to this. Uh, walk us through like what's it like having to deal with these types of elements, this type of size, this type of power in the ocean, um, you know, this this type of wind too. Yeah, you you really have all the elements. These are been some amazing shots from the from the helicopter going up from uh, the airport, you've got like the harbor and then it went past Maliki Gulch, which is the world's sketchiest launch for jet skis. It's this little narrow gap. You you launch off this rickety little harbor and it's super gnarly getting in and out of the water right there. And then you obviously head up. And Jaws is quite a, quite a trek on a ski or on a boat. And, um, you know, just getting up there in this wind is pretty taxing on the body. Um, and then, of course, when you get there, you're just in disbelief on, on what you see. I mean, uh, the first time I showed up on a day like this, um, it was pretty early in the day. It was during the, the towing contest. And the first thing I was on the ski with Brad Gerlach, and the first thing we saw was Laird Hamilton on like a 60-foot wave uh, tow surfing. And I will, to this day, I'll never forget it. It was, he just looked like this Greek god going all over this wave surfing it like it was a four foot wave and me and brad just looked at each other and went you got to be kidding me a wave like this actually exists it's this perfect and this big and um it was just a sight to see i couldn't believe it was real we had you know we had towed cortez and and waves like that but there's nothing in the world like jaws i i know i said it a little bit earlier but it's just it's just such a spectacular wave. The way it can hold its shape and be that big and that powerful. And um, this looks like um, someone with a kite surfing it. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's just an incredible place. And these images that helicopters getting right now are pretty spectacular. 
Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll apologize a little bit. Um, you know, the, the footage has really been quite good for the most part as we've been live for, oh gosh, over an hour now. Uh, but it, it gets a, a little jumpy at times as we see the uh, the foiler go down there. It, it does get a little bit jumpy at times, but bear with us. We've got, um, uh, we're, we're dealing with some cellular technology, uh, a, a backpack, a, a really cool camera setup. Um, and, you know, I've I, I just give, got to give a shout out to Mike Prickett and Josh Quick from Salt in there who partnered, partnered with us at Surfline uh, to bring you this incredible live feed from JAWS. Uh, Mike helped design the shot over, which is actually mounted on the front of the chopper and is keeping the camera stable. Um, so pretty amazing technology here. Pretty amazing that we can come to you live. Um, you know, when I found out that we were going to try and we were going to attempt this, um, I was uh, really excited just to be able to, to see the action here, to bring a unique perspective and to, to stream this and and, uh, and and obviously to, to chat with you, Snips. You know, that that's the best part, really. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. It's it's always a good time when we don't have to get in front of one of these 50 foot waves, right? We can uh, yeah. enjoy all the action from the safety of our of our home. But it, the technology is incredible. And um, like we keep saying, we've been blessed with this uh, crazy run of surf. Um, the North Pacific is completely uh, delivered and great to see Hawaii getting uh, all these great swells as well as the whole West Coast of California. I think that's um, the, the boat, the red boat with the huge, um, sort of raft looking thing on the back. I think that's, um, I want to say that's Kai's boat, maybe his dad, Martin, um, on there. You know, like, like I was saying earlier, most of these surfers have a full support squad that go with them out on these big days at Jaws and, and um, they have radios, they have uh, paramedics out there, they have all the safety issues covered, people they're talking to on the cliff. Um, so it's, it's um, at this level, at this type of day, it's a pretty serious, game that they're playing um and um yeah they take it they take it pretty serious and they're they're pretty trained up and, and ready to go all the best guys and girls in the world if we uh, pan back over to YMA here are some beautiful sets uh just seems like it's been pumping since first light you saw that big interval at first light at the 20 second interval and as you said Kevin as that comes down it seems like YMA really turns on with those those numbers almost match each other, like 18, 18, or somewhere in that zone. It seems like some uh, more consistency and better ways for YMA. Yeah, you know, and so we'll look back at our um, our YMA cam. This is actually our other YMA cam, uh, kind of somewhat looking back towards the the north and west here. It's on the other side of the bay from what we were seeing before. It offers a little different perspective, um, but it's you know, YMA is unique. Uh, I'll say at least somewhat unique in the fact that it's it's a big wave spot that doesn't like super long period swell. Actually, it it, it tends to do best, um, you know, more of the almost not mid periods. It's it's not not short periods certainly, but like 15 to 17 seconds just needs a really big deep water swell. Uh, and it, it, here's the, the the secondary view or the other view. Uh, this is looking back towards the northeast now uh, on the other side of the bay. Off in the distance, you can actually see outer log cabs break, outer log cabins breaking. Um, there were a couple of teams out there early this morning um, that were that were pecking around, hunting, pecking around for a few waves. It was a little bit slow out at that particular spot first thing this morning, uh, but things have certainly turned on. Uh, you know, we saw uh, it seems like this swell is going to have a couple different peaks to it um, from what we saw in the buoys and, and just some of the reports we've seen uh, from people on the ground. We saw some really big sets like late this morning on Oahu. Um, you know, like closeout sets at the bay, maybe even a couple closeout sets are pretty close to it in some of these outer reefs. Uh, and then it, that it kind of tabled off a little bit, leveled off a little bit, and it seems to be pulsing again right now. So it's seen a, a, a better consistency and some big sets coming through here at the bay again, uh, just beautiful conditions. And, um, you know, one of the reasons actually that, that YMAA tends to do better on slightly shorter period swells is that wave that you can see out in the distance at outer log cabins. Um, when the, the swells are very long period, um, a lot of that energy is focusing at outer logs and then also back towards alligators, which is to the left of the screen um, and out of view here. But uh, the, that long period energy focuses at those, those two different spots and leaves Waimea in somewhat of a swell void. Uh, so you might have like a 10 foot swell at 20 seconds plus and a spot like Jaws could be 40 feet plus uh, where Waimea is really not 
even really working. Um, you know, maybe some waves coming through, pin, you know, some waves coming through a pinballs in the inside, um, but just nowhere near what it is like right now. Um, this particular swell, there's, it's just a big swell. Um, you know, it's, uh, I haven't checked the Waimea buoy here for a little bit, but on the, the buoy one, we were up in the 18 to 21 foot plus range. Um, and so Waimea will be, usually be a couple feet smaller than that, but you know, pretty easily 16, 17, 18 feet of swell. Uh, as the swell peaks, um, and so we're yeah we're just getting these beautiful conditions here, uh, and uh, I mean it's going off. It's it's if it's not twenty foot Hawaiian on the sets, it's it's pretty dang close, and it will be right back. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff, please. And welcome back to this Super Swell Saturday. I am Director of Forecasting at Surfline Kevin Wallace, and we are coming to you live from the islands of uh, uh, islands of Maui and Oahu. Uh, we are live from a helicopter right here. We're looking down at Piahi on the north shore of Maui where it's been pumping, it's been windy. You can see lines stacked to the horizon right now. Uh, just an incredible day, incredibly challenging day. Uh, over on Maui and um, haven't seen a lot of paddle surfing. It's just a, a little too big, a little too windy, but we're seeing uh, guys getting towed in. We're seeing wind surfers there and we are seeing some uh, kite surfing as well with uh, a couple of incredible waves. You know, overall this, this swell is still building for Maui uh, and we are expecting it to peak later this afternoon and this evening. We're about three o'clock local time now uh, and you can see the shot that we're uh, uh, looking down towards looking down towards the water and, and spinning around a little bit, but uh, just been an incredible day of surf here. And uh, as we move over to Oahu, this is our surfline cam at Waimea Bay. Uh, we've actually got a couple different cams. This cam is on the west side of the bay and it's looking kind of back towards the northeast. I've seen some big sets here um, from time to time, way off in the distance, kind of in the upper right hand corner, you can actually see waves breaking and feathering out at outer log cabins. The swell has been on the rise quickly through the morning 
it peaked. We're seeing a couple different peaks for the island of Oahu and the, for the North Shore. Uh, we saw some really big sets around late morning, um, around right around 11 o'clock, where we saw a couple closeout sets or close to it for Waimea Bay. And, and when Waimea closes out, that's an indication that it's you know 40 foot faces or even a little bit larger than that. Uh, some of the outer reefs, we've seen some incredible waves out there as well. Just beautiful conditions too. Uh, here's our here's our outer reef. A couple of our outer reef waves. Uh, this is from earlier today. Uh, big, blue, and beautiful. I believe this is Mikey Wright um, Mikey taking Wright. on one of the, the bigger sets we saw this morning. Yeah, great. And again, big, long period swell, light winds, and just perfect so, conditions. Yeah. And, I'm good, uh, though. Here we are, about to get caught in the sun. Oh, get your heart around. racing a little bit. Let's turn around. Let's go. Whatever you want to do. Even know how big that is. Holy shit. How much bigger and better it's gonna look. And this is not a none other than John John Florence <laughs> tackling this beast. Oh my god. Right here, those are photos to keep. It looks like that right from that. Those are photos to keep. Holy shit. And this is shot by oh, Brett God. Bielman. Uh, he has been contributing and just uh, doing an awesome job for Surfline this afternoon. Abe Lerner there. Uh, they've been out and about all day chronicling this swell and uh, just seeing the incredible conditions uh, over on Oahu. We're back to Jaws now and quite a bit different. Uh, a lot of wind there. It's, it's really pretty amazing how much windier it can be at Jaws and uh, over on Maui as compared to the island of Oahu and the North Shore. You know, we're, we're probably, the, the wind speeds are probably triple uh, on Jaws right now. Uh, when, when we see flow out of the east, southeast, east to east, southeast, like we're seeing today, um, Oahu, you get, you get somewhat sheltered and you're somewhat in the lee of the big island of Hawaii. Of, uh, of Hawaii. And uh, over on, on Maui, uh, you just see that wind accelerate and that's a giant wave right there. Um, pretty incredible ride. That's actually one of the, the bigger waves I think we've seen today over on uh, over on Jaws. Again, this is uh, our, our Super Swell Saturday coverage. Um, we are we are live on uh, the island of, of Maui, and uh, we are checking our cameras, uh, the surfline cameras, on the island of Oahu on the North Shore too. Uh, big swell. This came from a storm just a couple days ago. We'll watch this next river get towed in here. That may be Ian Walsh, I believe, with that light blue board and surfing it about as good as it could be surfed. All right, and we are joined now by Mike Parsons. Uh, he is uh, the uh, Big Wave Charger and former Big Wave Tour Commissioner. And uh, Snips, what do you think? How was that said? That was wow. uh, actually DK Walsh. It wasn't, it wasn't Ian, but DK Walsh. I got at least got the Walsh part right. Yeah. Uh, well, DK spends a lot of time out there too. He's actually um, really good at uh, water safety. Um, he was um, at Cortez Bank when Greg Long ran into trouble and. Uh, help save his life. So DK is a phenomenal surfer, great guy, good, good waterman, and uh, yeah, the Walsh family breeds him, breeds him well. And the surf is incredible right now. Some of these waves, um, that jaw is hitting that, I don't know, 50, 60 foot range. It's got to be that big easily. Um, these aerial charts are incredible. Um, but yeah, no, it's, you can see how much foam is is uh, when you try to drive these skis it's just wild in there trying to get the ski to not cavitate because uh the intake on the skis as we see a rescue here um it, it's hard to get the get enough power for it to work in the whitewash that's why you see most of these skis are the bigger uh yamaha that was a nice rescue there and then um obviously they're bolting for the channel 
and uh, you kind of forget about the board. But the good thing about the tow boards is um, is uh, you're not wearing a leash. You can see he inflated there, um, so he looks like the Michelin man. He's all puffed up, and uh, like we spoke about earlier, that's just an amazing, uh, relatively new um, thing in, in big wave surfing that has definitely saved lives. Yeah, it's been cool to see you know, a, a group like, like um, BWRAG, Big Wave Risk Assessment Group, come to life over the last few years and all the great work and all the education they provided um, to keeping surfers safe out in the lineup in conditions like this as we looked at, I believe this is the replay of that wave, um, but it's uh, the, the safety aspect of big wave surfing has grown exponentially in the last few years and, um, uh, you know, I. I I think it's a it's great. It's for all of us that that are you know are going to just watch at home. Um, you know, to have, I have no desire to, to put myself into, into waves of this magnitude. But I love to watch surf. I love to watch guys and gals charge this stuff. Uh, I I feel even better when I, I know that they have a crew behind them to help them keep them safe. Yeah, you can see them communicating with the boat there. Um, like I mentioned earlier, they're they're pretty serious. They have they have people on there. If they, if you needed to revive someone or, or went to the next level of an emergency, they're definitely prepared. Um, that was a gnarly, gnarly wipeout. Um, looks like he was okay when he got back on the ski, but uh, nothing quite like wiping out on a fifty foot wave at Jaws. It's uh, kind of people always ask, what what's that feel like, you know? And and every Big wave surfer tries to explain it a little bit different, but um, it's Mr. Toad's wild ride for sure underwater. Your body and limbs are getting ripped in every direction, and you're you're trying to stay calm, but it's pretty hard when when it's that the, the feeling of the of jaws. It's super violent and uh, just radical. You can see um, looks like um, everyone's okay on the boat there. Just kind of regroup, and it definitely a wipeout like that can can really take it out of you. In fact sometimes you're you're done for the day with a big hit like that um it just you you lose all that oxygen sometimes after uh, you get rolled and tumbled like that you just you need an hour or two to sort of get your legs back under you and feel like you have your strength back um so that was a pretty heavy looking wipeout yeah what's have you ever gone through like a, a two-wave hold down or anything like that snips um yeah i have i did at maverick some um, and that was about the scariest thing uh, I've ever experienced. But um, it's a crazy feeling when you're you think you're nearing the surface and it's actually on your mind. Um, you're, you know the next wave is close, and you're you know you're already feeling like you're out of out of breath. Um, and then the next one, you feel it roll over, and you got to try to convince yourself to relax again. And um, yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a wild feeling because right. I mean, if if we got a twenty second period. Or, or close to that right now you got to figure you go down and uh, the next waves come in about 20 seconds behind so by the time you pop up from the second one maybe a 30 second hold down which you know in, in a in an environment a, a, like a swimming pool that's pretty easy but if you try holding your breath for 30 seconds while you're getting tumbled and rolled and after a wipeout it's uh, magnified by four or five times. So I would say a 30 second hold down is equal to, you know, over two minutes of just stagnant, you know, holding your breath, even more probably. So yeah. a two wave hold down is, is, every big surfer's nightmare is a two wave hold down, but these guys and girls train for it. Um, and if you're gonna surf waves that big and uh, towing or paddling, I think you gotta be, you gotta be prepared to that might be the outcome. You got to be ready to, to deal with it. Yeah, the yeah the the preparation. So beyond, yeah, the, I think there's two aspects of the preparation that we've seen evolve over the last several years. And, and number one is just the the safety aspect of it, um, and having a safety team in place for for these big swells. And then um, the physical preparation, uh, the breath work, uh, the 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 athletic uh, training that everyone is going through to to be able to. Um, you know, to survive a two or maybe even a three wave hold down. It's, it's, it's crazy to see, you know, some of, some of these guys that can pretty easily hold their breath for four or five, six minutes at a time. You know, a guy like Healy, Mark Healy, I don't even know, that guy can hold his breath for 10 minutes, it seems like. Pretty wild what, what some of the surfers can do. Yeah, 
uh, it's incredible. He's uh, so amazing. At the, you see a lot of them will, you know, uh, be free divers and uh, stuff like that. Incredible in, in the ocean. I'm just trying to figure out who that was. Um, I think that was one of the girls. That was pretty cool. I'm not too sure. Maybe Justine uh, DuPont, possibly. Um, she's been just incredible the last couple of years of what she's done um, at Nazare. Um, like I mentioned earlier the other day at Maverick, she I think she's kind of put herself at the at the forefront of the of leading the women's charge. I believe this is this could be her on this wave. Hard to tell from this far away, but when when she was jumping on the sled, it might might be her. If it's not her, she's she's been performing incredible lately. Yeah, who are who are the, the the women that are standing out in your mind in the you know the, well the big wave realm especially, but uh, even even the smaller surf at this point. Um, well, in the smaller surf, uh, Carissa Moore has been incredible. She uh, the way she served pipeline um, in the contest this year, but having the women at pipe for the first time, I thought was really cool and really really radical to see. Um, some of the wipeouts were pretty heavy. Um, They've never really had a chance to practice much there, and I thought Carissa uh, just did a great job. Obviously, Tyler did well winning the event. Um, in the big wave side of things, um, Paige Alms has been the one the last couple of years out here at Jaws that's led the charge. She, she lives right there. She trains for this wave, for these kind of days. Um, and then Kiala Kenley, she's won the event a few times, and um, she's been charging huge waves forever. Um, Bianca Valenti from uh, California has been been charging all over the world. Uh, Emmy Erickson's uh, Roger Erickson's daughter. Uh, she's pretty darn talented and loves big surf um, anywhere in Hawaii. And then Andrea Mahler has been um, uh, involved in the the lifeguard and the rescue, and she's been surfing Jaws for years and a really talented surfer, uh, tow or paddle. Um, she's been doing great out there. So. The girls have been getting after it, and it's really good to see um, the, the evolution. I was listening to the podcast with Mick Fanning and Ross Williams uh, yesterday, and they were talking about how much they, they think the women have improved in surfing in general um, in the last couple of years. I couldn't agree more. It's um, it's fun to be a part of it, coaching the girls. I work with uh, Lakey Peterson and Caroline Marks, and it's been, it's been fun watching uh, all the girls improve and being around the events. and. Um, it's going to be interesting having them at, at Chopu on this year's tour um, coming up in August, and uh, and watching them surf pipeline was was really cool. And uh, but there's nothing like paddling out of Jaws. Uh, kudos to any <laughs> girl, girl or guy that uh, yeah, uh, whoever kind of life jumps off a boat and paddles into that lineup is is one uh, badass individual. So that's uh, that's next level stuff right there for sure. Cool, and it uh, looks like we are going to watch a clip of what it's like trying to launch a, a ski here at Jaws. We'll cue that up. So we've been here for 30 minutes, and it has been nonstop. It's definitely not what you want when you're trying to launch a ski. And the swell is only getting bigger, so we're gonna go launch out of Kalalui. Biggest you've ever seen inside there? Time to just got a hair out. <laughs> we're getting older now, so we're trying to be smarter. But yeah, it looks like a nightmare. So coming in tonight is gonna be crazy. Good luck, everyone. But uh, we're on our way to call Louis. That was Tori Meister uh, trying to trying to get the ski out. We've got someone uh, getting whipped in here right now. Uh, again, yeah, we are we are, we are like live here at Jaws on a big, windy, gnarly, crazy day. And I am uh, Surfline Director of Forecasting, Kevin Wallace. On this big day, I'm joined by Mike Parsons, and uh, we are just enjoying the show. This is uh, helicopter footage that we are providing. Actually, uh, this is thanks to Mike Prickett and Josh Quick from Salt Air and Air. Uh, they partnered with us at Surfline to bring you this live feed from Jaws. Uh, Mike actually helped design the shot over, which is mounted on the front of the chopper and keeping the camera stable. So we're stoked to be able to bring this to you, stoked to have this technology. Um, just, yeah, it's it's exciting. We, we Snips and I jumped on a little bit earlier and, and we were watching uh, on the flight 
uh, up the coast from the airport and just you know watching the, the the beauty that is Maui and and heading into the wind and um, you know just seeing this day unfold as as uh, you know generally as we had hoped we had high anticipations for the swell and uh, it has lived up to it the winds wind the wind has lived up to it too on Maui as it usually does uh, incredibly challenging conditions but a couple of beautiful waves that have been ridden here. You know, since we were just a little while ago, we were talking about some of the women that that were have been really impressed with, and yeah, you know, I, I couldn't agree more um, on on the big wave side and the smaller wave side too. Um, I've I've had the the opportunity to do the the Honolulu forecast, the Maui Pro forecast for oh gosh, most of the last decade or or so, and I've. You know that 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 event traditionally runs during uh, the time that the sunset. Wow, big big set at Waimea here right now too. Uh, but that that the Maui Pro generally runs at the same time as the sunset event on Oahu, and and I've found myself uh, gravitating towards watching the women actually more so than the men at, at sunset, just in those perfect conditions and and to see the level of surfing that um, women like Carissa Moore and Steph Gilmore. And Tyler Wright bring and and um, and Lakey and um, just just everybody. It's it's been a, a really cool thing to see that progression, and and I'm excited to see them in different ways. You mentioned that they had the opportunity to surf at, at Pipeline this year. Um, they were given the opportunity to surf at, at Cloudbreak a couple of years ago. Chopu is later later this year. Hopefully, fingers crossed that they'll be able to run. Um, but it's been really cool and and then you've got this really young generation that's coming up too that is just absolutely blowing mind i think the you know, like a guy like aaron brooks who is just um as as good a surfer uh, male or female as you're ever going to see at, at that age you know it's, it's it's been really fun to see yeah it is incredible for sure it's been a it's been fun to to watch the the evolution of the the women's side of the sport and um yeah, it's it's being pushed. I think the wave pools have really helped uh, technically with the with uh, the girls learning errors, and now they're pushing themselves in big waves and on swells like today, which is uh, just incredible to watch. Um, and uh, that that was funny going back to Tori Meister trying to launch from a leaky gulch. That was the the launch ramp I was uh, mentioning earlier. It's uh, it's such a narrow little gap there. It looked like the the whole channel there was closed out, and those are those are when you know it's one of the really, really big days at Jaws when you cannot launch from there. So um, that speaks volumes to the, to the size of the swell. And that last set we just saw at YMA looked like it nearly closed out. So so this is a pretty special swell. Um, so we haven't seen one this big in an awfully long time. And uh, pretty cool to sit here and, and, and check it out from all these different angles. Yeah, you know, we are uh, just looking at the buoys right now. Um, buoy one, um, which is about 270 miles northwest of the island of Oahu and is about a half day indicator for Jaws and you know kind of around eight days or excuse me eight hours out from the north shore at this swell direction and period still bombing still 17 feet at 17 seconds as of um, as of uh, kind of 1 to 2 p.m. we saw a peak in the swell starting early this morning around 2 a.m. Uh, basically anywhere from 2 to 8 a.m. is when we saw the swell peak on that buoy and it was in the 18 to 21 foot plus range at 17 to 20 seconds. Uh, kind of a little different peaks and valleys on that swell. The first peak uh, seemed to hit Oahu late morning, somewhere around 11 o'clock. We saw some really big sets and closeout sets at the bay. Uh, some of the waves that we, we showed earlier at the Outer Reefs, I believe that was around that time. Um, we should see, see the secondary peak coming through the afternoon as, as we watched by man. We saw uh, really a couple big sets roll through. Uh, 10 minutes ago or so, something like that. And, and this well should be building through the afternoon and into the evening uh, for Jaws and uh, just be absolutely pumping there. You know, again, it's uh, very challenging conditions over on Jaws. We've got strong easterly trades, um, much more benign on, on the North Shore, uh, much lighter winds, beautiful conditions there. And, um, you know, it's, it's uh, really been a, a pleasure to watch this throughout the day. You know, we can we'll bring up our, our forecast information here. We can have a look at the storm one more time or, or another time, I should say. And, and um, you know, this, the storm evolved over the last two to three days. And um, it was 
just a beautiful hurricane force low, uh, one of many hurricane force lows that we've seen in the North Pacific over the last month. Uh, here's our satellite presentation of that 40 to 60 knot wind, some higher, you know, some pockets of higher wind in there too. Um, the unique thing about this one, or the good thing about this one, I should say, in comparison to a lot of different swells that we've seen in Hawaii over the last three to four weeks, uh, was it took a better track towards the islands. Uh, it came very close. We saw feet, we saw seas in the 50 foot plus range that were 1,500 miles, 1,200 miles, even within about a thousand miles. Um, so that all that all contributes to this this strong, consistent swell. Um, the storm moved in a way too, where what what we call a captured fetch developed, where the strongest winds remained over the strongest developing seas uh, for a day or two, and then it actually followed in a previous storm's footsteps. There was another big swell that hit Hawaii on, on Thursday that followed in that storm's footsteps. So um, it had an already agitated sea state to work with. It's kind of like preheating an oven. And you know all of those factors go into delivering uh, a large consistent swell. And, and some of those ones like the captured fetch and the already agitated sea state can often mean that, that the, the swell will come in a little bit above model guidance. And, and that's what's happened here. Um, we've got uh, easterly trades, moderate, light to moderate easterly trades for Oahu, uh, breezy easterly trades for, for Maui today. You know, heading into tomorrow, we're going to see winds back off quite a bit actually for Maui. Um, you see a front pass to the north and that's going to cause winds to go light and variable and, and tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, really should be um, a, a pretty interesting and, and good day for the paddling crew. Uh, surf size is going to drop by roughly half. Um, but that's still pretty solid, you know, still probably 30, 35 foot faces uh, with light winds. And I, I think we're going to see some great paddle waves uh, first thing tomorrow morning. We're back here uh, on Waimea Bay, at, at Waimea Bay. And this is uh, one of our two cameras uh, on Surfline at Waimea. And uh, this one's actually on the kind of the, the west side of the bay looking back towards the northeast. Uh, and then jumping back here to Jaws for for just a second here. But it's uh, the, the super cool set, and uh, we are we are live on Surfline. Uh, great looking wave here at, at Jaws right now. Um, Snip, Snip do you, do you, were you Waimea guy? Do you surf Waimea very much? I did, I did. I love uh, Waimea. It um, reminds me a lot of Totos, and uh, it's yeah. it's weird. Waimea doesn't necessarily sometimes photograph as big as some of the other waves in the world, but it's so gnarly out there, and it's so so big and it's every bit as powerful as as anywhere in the world and um yeah I, I really enjoy it it's one of those spots where you can you know you sit under it a little bit um and it, it's just um it's one of those ways it's pretty gnarly when a huge set comes to like brock little used to always say like oh you know to surf why i bay you got to be able to sit there when when the horizon's just black the sets everyone knows the set's coming everybody will paddle out and the guys who really want the wave will sit in the bowl um and brock used to do that better than any of them um and it was just so it's so so heavy to to sit there knowing it, every instinct in your body is telling you paddle out but you know that wave's going to double up over the reef and you got to sit in and under it and um you know ymas ymas is awesome I, I love it and uh you know, it, it holds its place in um, in big wave surfing. It's it's uh, where it all started, right, for everybody. So, um, pretty special place. Yeah, well, I mean, what an incredible history to the bay, and and kind of all the characters that that surfed here. And um, you know, who so who were the guys that, that you looked up to uh, as you were, you know, especially getting into big wave surfing? Who were the guys that you really admired and, and, and looked up to, and and you know, maybe asked for advice, things like that. Well, it, it, when I was at Grom, I used, I used to watch uh, Jeff Hackman and read the story of him surfing Sunset when he was 14, and I was just super impressed with that. And then a little bit later on, it was, you know, uh, Derek Donner was, was the man on Oahu and at Waimea, and, and uh, he blew my mind how, how he surfed Waimea. Um, and, and then, you know, Laird and what those guys did on Maui is what – what we started looking at, I, was, I couldn't believe what we were seeing when they started the strap crew and what they started doing with the toe surfing. Um, so yeah, but um, you know, even back to watching Greg Knoll and all those stories, I, I love the history of, of, of big wave surfing and it, it's unbelievable the board they used to ride at Waimea. And, um, yeah, so I I first 
started getting into big ways when I went with the NSA team. We went to Hawaii and we started surfing Sunset. And I just thought, wow, this is so cool. And uh, when I came home, I used to call my friends in Hawaii when it got big and why it may have broke. And we started going to Toto's two days later, uh, right when Sean was kind of starting the surf line and forecasting and learning um, when Toto's would be good. And we had our own little private spot down there with just friends and and uh, and started getting into big waves. So yeah, it was a uh, it was a it was a good time to to kind of get introduced to big wave surfing. I feel lucky because I uh, got to surf a lot of big waves without without the crowds of today. Yeah. So when did when did you meet Sean? Actually, um, I met Sean. We went. I was probably eighteen, and we went to Cabo with the NSSA team, and he came on the trip, <laughs> and. Um, and uh, we, we we shared a mutual love for, for Baja, and um, and I became uh, very close with Sean over the years. As you know, we did a lot of trips in Mexico, and I I would always pick his brain about about swells and forecasting. And um, so I was probably eighteen. So um, yeah, a long long time ago. I remember he used to help Laird a lot um, forecasting. Um, I remember he was telling Laird. Um, Go to Honolulu in the morning. It, it was dead flat. He said by by twelve o'clock you'll see the first set. And this was like way before good forecasting, and, and, and the ball came up right on cue. And uh, yeah, he used to um, help uh, a lot of the a lot of the um, a lot of the guys and girls um, on kind of a personal level. And uh, he really um, built it into something incredible. Obviously, with what you guys are doing now um, in terms of forecasting and. Uh, yeah, what, what a story. Very cool. Well, um, we're going to queue up a little clip of some of the O'Neill Wave of the Winter highlights uh, from the entry so far. So let's check it out. Welcome back. We are here on uh, Super Swell Saturday, Surfline Super Swell Saturday, uh, with a pumping Northwest Swell in Hawaii. We are coming to you live from Jaws on Maui, uh, from a helicopter, actually, believe it or not. Uh, pretty incredible footage, big, windy, gnarly surf on Maui. And uh, also got watching the action on Oahu as well. 
Waimea and the Otto Reefs have been going off all day. Uh, this big northwest swell has filled in. It's basically peaking now for Oahu, still building for the island of Maui, and Jaws is going to be peaking through the afternoon and, and even into the evening. Um, we still have well, a couple hours of, of daylight left to, to watch the swell build as we uh, see the action. Guys towing in out here. Not a, not a paddle day. Uh, too big, too windy, too gnarly, but we are seeing some in incredible uh, towing rides. I am joined by Mike Snips Parsons, and we have been enjoying the footage so far. Um, back to Waimea here. And Snips, okay, here's, here's my next question for you. Like, who's, who's, who's the wave of the winner from what we just watched there? That's, that, that was a pretty that cool was, little, little feature. God, that was really tough to say, right? I mean, it's incredible yeah. what Pipeline's been doing this year. Um, I like one. I like Billy Kemper's wave in there. I like um, the one of John John's amazing um, Crosby. It's it's going to be hard this year. I don't think they've uh, they've had this many entries for for a wave of the winter. And uh, yeah, pretty cool to see. I like I said, Pipeline's just been had a few magic days, and and um, yeah, we'll see what comes of this swell. Some of the outer reef stuff um, certainly going to going to be in contention as well. Well, we're back to Jaws here and a giant wave that's been towed into. Um, you know, this is uh, windy conditions over on Maui, like I mentioned, much, much, much windier on Maui, as it tends to be as compared to Oahu, but just that's a giant wave. Wow. Uh, yeah. Just in, in, incredible. Yeah, it seems like the swell is really filling in on, on, uh, on Maui now. It also looks a little more groomed on the face um a super windy but but manageable for towing i think you're gonna we're gonna see some incredible rides here this afternoon and uh seems like it's getting a little bigger yeah that's what i'm just gonna say it does look a little cleaner to me as well um you know it's obviously still really windy i wonder if that the, the, the wind direction has changed a little bit i mean i don't, I don't how big is that a 60 foot wave or close it's gotta be i think i think so uh i think it's every bit of that um yeah, I mean, taken from a hel that's just a giant wave. Taken from a helicopter, it's uh, got to be in that sixty foot range. Um, yeah, it always kind of flattens out when you're looking at it from above. Yeah, yeah, that's a, just an incredible set. Hard to tell. This could be Billy Camper on this huge one. It looks like the color of his board to me. Um, yeah, that was a joke. How big that wave was. Um, I think that was Billy for sure. Um, he yeah. doesn't tow that much. He likes to focus on paddling. Um, hard to say if it was for sure, but I think one of those ways with Billy, um, it's um, it, you got to be prepared for anything out there on, on days like this. And, and like we were talking about earlier, some of the guys uh, and girls bringing tow boards, kind of making a little bit of comeback here. Yeah, these are some some big big waves for sure. I would say in that sixty plus range for sure yeah is that kai that looks like maybe his boy yeah that's kai right <laughs> doing that um yeah, yeah it's, it's I, lo I i love this vantage point too because you can obviously you can see the lines marching in but you can see how it horseshoes around the reef and it's just this yeah. perfect way you, know, you described it as kind of like v land at times 100 um but yeah. it's just this this perfect horseshoeing wave um around that ridge and coming out of the canyon it's just it's amazing to see from above yeah and the thing of it is, is when you're towing you 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 want to ride the wave from deep enough um but you always think you're too deep because the way it bends you know you're coming it, it horseshoes out and you're like oh my god i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get around this section and, and the reef is so perfect you wind up making it um it's just just a phenomenal wave and you see how comfortable um, Kai looks with his equipment, and um, you know he does so much of the wind sports and and all that windsurfing and and uh, foiling and all that stuff. You can see that um, he's just so comfortable when it's windy out there. I think it might have been um, uh, Ian Walsh on one of these waves too. That was just an amazing set. Um, these guys' legs are going to be burning tonight <laughs> when they're done because these are some big long rides, and it's just you got to have such strong quads to to handle those bumps. And 
and you know you try to minimize your time on the rope when you're going back out and stuff so you so you can save your legs i think these waves are, are over 60 feet when uh, just the, the angle of, of filming down i think when we see these images from down in the water we're going to be just baffled on how big these waves are yeah, guys like, right oh it's like 80 feet right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah uh, that was uh, that was really cool that was uh the best set i think we've seen since we've been on that was uh quite a flurry yeah that was that was big and yeah it did seem like it would just it was pretty much groomed to um yeah uh, near perfection that's true maui glass that's for sure <laughs> yeah no doubt yeah we we talked a lot about the um the water safety and the boats and uh it's cool. It's it's it, there's nothing like being in the water that jaws and it's 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 one of those waves that you can sit pretty close to it because of the channel and um, you know you're you're sitting there drinking a coffee or a cold beer and you're you're fifty yards away from guys risking their life. It's it's pretty crazy how that works at at, at this spot. Yeah, it's it's um, the the first time I was out in the channel was uh, during what I think it was gosh was the 2016 event I want to say, and you know we we right as we pull up, um, you know it was maybe eight o'clock a little bit before that, and it was the one that the wave where Dorian like dropped out of the sky and somehow landed it and then kept going, and you know. Easily the biggest wave I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, fifty foot wave, whatever it was, and it was just it, the, to see it in person. Um, as cool as as amazing as it, as it is to see this right now, uh, as we as we watch these riders and maybe someone pulling into a barrel here, they're going to come out. Um, as as amazing as it is to to see this footage, to see it in person, um, is just truly eye opening and 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 really mind blowing. Uh, you just it's. My brain couldn't quite fathom how big the waves are. And my brain can barely fathom how big the wa this wave is right now um, that we're seeing ridden. It's boy, it's really pulsing right now, and it seems like it's getting pretty good. Um, and that's on, you know, that's on on schedule um, based on on those buoy one observations. We did expect it to be to be filling in uh, all the way through this afternoon and this evening, and and we should continue to see it build and see the biggest waves of this swell. Uh, kind of the end of the day, kind of around sunset today. So stay tuned for sure. We're going to uh, continue to see some some crazy action here at Jaws. Oh, and that's definitely Kai Lenny. Um, that's an that's an easy one to spot. Um, that board and and what he's doing and just kind of toying with these whatever this is, sixty foot waves, going off the top and doing airs and doing Kai Lenny things. Um, that's amazing. I think we're gonna get a we'll get a a replay of this and we'll just watch the Kai Lenny show. The Kai's been on a tear. Uh, you know, he was doing things like this at Mavericks, the, the day of day swells, which was December 8th when it was in the, the 45 to 50 foot range. And he was uh, one of a handful of standouts on that swell. That was, you know, kind of one of the first swells in this incredible run that we've seen in the North Pacific over roughly the last six weeks. It, it actually kicked off in Hawaii, uh, December 2nd or December 3rd. Um, that was the, the last really big swell for Hawaii. After that, most of the action has actually been aimed uh, and focused at the on the West Coast and you know, Mavericks in particular. We probably saw the best two-week run of waves at Mavs ever, potentially. Uh, I know we'll probably probably need a a, a little bit from uh, need a little distance to to see if we if we can actually call it that, but. Uh, we're certainly going to dive into the data here over the next few days once the North Pacific finally slows down, which it looks like it's going to do uh, at least a little bit compared to what it's been. But, you know, just an incredible two week run of waves uh, there at Mavericks and things have been slightly slower for the islands. But, um, you know, a lot of these swells were more like glancing blows. So it wasn't giant, but very consistent surf for the islands. And then this swell has, has come in and is the, the biggest of it all. 
uh, biggest swell of them all and, and really one of the biggest swells we've seen in years, uh, probably since here at JAWS, at least since um, the, 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 the late November 2018 swell when the event was run and, and ultimately had to, to, to uh, be called off. But uh, just seeing incredible action here with, with wave after wave. Um, great set coming in right now. And again, uh, it's, it's a, a tow surfing affair this afternoon. We're seeing very large, long period surf, and it's just absolutely pumping right now. Yeah, unbelievable these last couple of sets. Um, the one way the Kai was incredible. He's kind of toy, uh, toying with the barrel there on easy 60 foot wave. We've seen some great rides from Ian Walsh, uh, Billy Kemper. I'm pretty sure a couple of those might have been Makua. Um, the heavy hitters are all out here right now enjoying some some incredible rides. And um, like I mentioned earlier, you, you see once once they really start getting comfortable, um, Kevin, they start letting go a little earlier, going a little deeper and toying with that barrel. The thing about Jaws is it's, it's such a perfect wave. It's, it's very it's very mechanical and predictable in a way. Um, so you really can start to, to up your performance as you get comfortable and you get a few rides. You start going a little deeper. You start waiting at the top a little longer, letting go of the rope a little sooner. And uh, you'll see these guys guys and girls really get comfortable towards the end of the day um, and really perform uh, at, at, at their peak. Yeah, and imagine your, your confidence just continues to build. I mean, I, I think um, a lot of these surfers are, are pretty highly confident in their abilities given the, all the, 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 the practice and preparation that they, they put into it. But with each, wave, each successful wave on a day like the, today, um, yeah, I'd, I'd imagine that the confidence just goes to the roof. Looks like we've got Kai Lenny up again, um, somehow making this look easy um, with the bump and the chop and, um, and giant, giant surf. I think it was the third wave in about 10 minutes here. Yeah, I think, um, like I said earlier, I think some of these guys were and girls were taking a break um, for a minute there. It looks like the conditions have groomed up. They know the swell's going to get bigger right now, and this is the, this is the time. Um, this looks like uh, maybe uh, Ian Walsh, too. Um, you can tell some of these guys by what ski is the Red Bull ski, so um, more than likely um, Ian on a couple of these as well. Yeah, so I think they paced themselves a little bit, um, but geez, it's really turning on right now. Yeah, this is definitely this is the the best surf we've seen, the the best action we've seen all day. We've we've been live for just about two hours now, or a little maybe a little bit more. Um, and this flurry of waves over the last 10 or so minutes is is certainly the best we've seen today. Best, biggest seems to be cleaning up a little bit, um, and just uh, um, amazing what what the what the local Maui crew is doing out here in these types of conditions. The, the bumps on Kai's last wave that was so gnarly. Oh, those were giant ski bumps, and uh, I love the view from from straight up above. I mean, it. it it, it's so incredible to watch them let go and just track it and track it and then the thing just build under them. It's just an incredible swell. Gosh, yeah, what this is an amazing footage. Um, super yeah. stoked to be getting this. Um, you know, this is a, a, a relatively new, th obviously very new thing that, that we're doing with, with this type of footage and, and coverage of these swells, but it's certainly something we want to do more of uh, in the future. And when we see a special swell line up like this, and our, our forecast team is, is getting excited like we have been over the last few days, watching this thing come to fruition, it's, it's uh, very gratifying to see this, this come through like this and to, to see the action here out at, uh, out at Jaws. Yeah, I wish we could identify the guys and girls a little better. So apologies if we messed anybody's name. I know guys like Alvi Lair and Tyler Laron, the local guys um, and girls. I'm sure Paige is out there. Um, just yeah, um, if we missed anyone's name or got it wrong, sorry. It's it's hard to tell, but um, I think that could the last wave could have been um, Alvi or Billy. Hard to say. Um, but yeah, geez Louise, these sets just, the thing about Jaws is um, a few times uh, 
when I've been out there and then watch the footage back later, there was there was upwards of eight, ten, even one time fourteen waves in a set at Jaws. And is that Kevin? Does that have to do with the with the uh, sort of aggravated sea state or the captured fetch or what makes the consistency at a place like Jaws? Because it's um, it seems like when the sets come and really start hitting, they they sometimes can have really large numbers of waves in the sets. Whereas like California or Mavericks, you usually see like three to four waves. Where Hawaii outer reefs, you're you get upwards of like 10, 15 waves, which makes it so gnarly if you fall on the first one and you've got yeah. ten waves to it. Yeah, and, and these sets just continue to pour in here, obviously, uh, been nonstop. And I, that, uh, you know, consistency, there's, there are a lot of things that go into consistency. Um, the, the track of the storm, um, the, prox the, the, the proximity of the storm itself, um, you know, you want something, a storm that's close enough uh, to provide a, uh, to, pr or to produce a really big swell, but still far enough away that you don't get that, like the poor weather that can come with it. You want something that ideally that moves right at you. Um, if you've got uh, that captured fetch that we talked about a little bit, if we have an aggravated sea state that we talked about a little bit, um, all of those things really go into the consistency factor. The other thing that uh, we've seen over the years is that if you have a, a storm with um, very strong supporting high pressure on, you know, in, in this case it would be like on, a storm, on the storm's western flank for Hawaii, um, if you have all of those things um, you tend to see a very consistent swell with a lot of waves in the sets, um, and you know that's that's what we're we're seeing here. This one didn't have necessarily the best high, high pressure support, but it did take a good track towards Hawaii. It did have that um, you know the pre -ex the, the ex already excited sea state to work with, uh, and then it um, had that captured fetch too. So uh, just like pumping surf right now. Um, so yeah, it's. It's a it's a it's a pleasure to watch this and a pleasure to see it kind of clean up and to see the really the world's best surfers uh, out here charging and and I think you're right I think that people were taking a break for a little while and and it's it's been game on over the last twenty or thirty minutes. Yeah, they're all they're all onto it and uh, I think that yeah goes back to what we were talking about before they they they're pretty clued into the buoys and. And the wind, and when it's going to be best throughout the day, and when it's this big, you got to pace yourself a little bit. And um, Kai's definitely going for the wave count right now. He's been on four or five waves in the last twenty minutes. Looks like he's uh, enjoying himself. And um, I think one of those waves, a wave or two back, was one of the local girls. I I wish I knew who it was, but um, I know some of the girls are are towing right now, which is really Ooh. cool to see. We'll wipe out there. We've, we've got a, yeah. actually had a, a, user, a user question from Roller Skates. How far offshore is Jaws? Um, and it's it's not super far. Like in comparison to like the the outer reefs on Oahu, it's not like super super far offshore. Like from swimming from the rocks out to the actual break is probably like I don't know. What do you think? Like three hundred yards, maybe snips? Yeah, I was going to say three hundred yards. About three three football fields. It's um. It's not as far out as, uh, say, Mavericks from the beach. Um, it's pretty far out, but the whitewater line goes all the way to shore, so it's um, it's not as far as is that. Um, you, the view from the cliff is is amazing. You can, if you can get on the property there and watch, it's incredible to watch from the cliff. But nothing gives you the feel of of uh, in power of like being down in the water, like these shots of the. The skis going in, really radical driving the ski way inside there with the rocks and the, you know, even even the smallest white water in there is like six eight feet and that's so much power all the way to the rock. So it's it's pretty pretty gnarly when when um, when you go in on the ski and, and try to uh, perform a rescue or, or grab your partner. Um, it's one of the heavier places to to tow and to drive a ski for sure. It's um you want to be really well. Uh, really good at driving a ski before you try it at Jaws. It's not a it's not a spot to to try it at unless you're uh, pretty skilled on one of these watercrafts. Yeah, I don't think I want to be out there for the first time on on a ski. <laughs> get, some of these practice. Well. You can see how quick uh, some of these pickups have been, and how how good these guys and girls are at at driving the skis and. 
you know, you don't, you don't have much time. Um, usually when you go down, you got to wear at least one or two waves on the head before a ski is going to get to you. Um, it's pretty rare that you wipe out and get picked up on that first breath and don't go through at least one or two waves behind. Gosh, and we just continue to see sets pour in right now and guys and gals charging um, what's you know, 50, 60 foot surf, uh, if not a little bit bigger, obviously uh, viewed from above as this helicopter, it, it distorts the size a little bit, but it looks really big from the helicopter. So that means it's really, really big, most likely just incredibly challenging conditions with this long period Northwest swell, uh, breezy trades, uh, but uh, it does seem like it's cleaned up just a little bit. I don't, I don't know if the wind's back. I haven't looked at any wind observation lately. I don't know if the wind is, has actually backed down just a little bit, if it's shifted direction slightly, um, but it just looks a little bit cleaner overall, a little bit better, and, um, and it does tend to happen a little late in the day. We're still, we're about four o'clock local time now. Um, and as we move back towards the North Shore, this is our, our Waimea camp. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, not as big here at Waimea, but still some very large waves um, coming through at Waimea. Uh, we had a, a user actually ask a question earlier what the wave in the background is, kind of up in the upper right that you can see feathering. That's actually the outer log cabins. Um, and there were some tow teams that were out there uh, checking things first thing this morning when we're still a little bit slower. I uh, haven't seen any footage specifically from there yet, but um, obviously there's some waves out there and the outer reefs in general have just been going off. It's it's the wind is much lighter on Oahu as it tends to be in comparison to Maui. And I've uh, seen some great waves come through, some big closeout sets at times at the bay. And, uh, you know, here's here's looking at uh, one of the outer reefs earlier today. This is John John Florence and uh, a big blue perfect wave. Yeah, this has got to be one of the biggest left barrels um, possibly ever, <laughs> judging by this photo. I mean, this is a uh ridiculous way i mean that's kind of next level stuff and um crazy he set his line there and got control but wow this is a gigantic left yeah that uh, that was brent billman that that got the footage and uh, abe learner there brett's been out on the water pretty much all day um getting footage for us and for our presentation here so thank you to brett this is it's been awesome to, to see what you've been able to put together uh, yeah, that was mikey right on uh, a big left here and and now we're gonna see what it feels like to get almost get caught inside at one of the outer reefs um this is from earlier today too yeah just that uh the, the the amount of power in the in the wall and the size of this um and the thing that's gnarly about the, the outer reefs too is um like i was saying earlier you can have a you can get caught by one of the early waves in the set or go down and then have 10 waves behind it so it's a real serious game and, and they're also the outer reefs are, are they're pretty shifty like you you've got your lineups and you think you know where you are and then all of a sudden there's a, a bigger set that breaks you know, 50 yards further out, which makes it incredibly radical because you want to sit in and, and be on the reef and get waves, but it, on a swell like this, it, at some point throughout the day, you're going to get clean. And what's, so for for those of us that never want to be in that position, what is it, what's it like to get caught inside on a, you know, 40, 50 foot wave? Um, it's pretty darn scary. You just, <laughs> kind of got to go, okay, I'm in this situation, I got to deal with it. Um, all these guys and girls that are that are putting themselves there are thinking about it all summer long, at least most of them that are serious about it and training. And you got to try to stay calm and, you know, uh, get really good rest when you, when you come up and um, relax. Uh, that's about all you can do, really. I mean, you, you, you want to be trained for it. You want to be able to hold your breath a long time. You want to have a safety crew with you. You want to think about all the things that can go wrong before you paddle out or go out on a ski. You kind of want to go through all the worst case scenarios and um, and you mentally prepare for it a little bit. And you, you know what I always found is it, it a lot of times it's more scary the night before the swell or or. Um, the lead up and when you're actually out there you're just dealing with the elements and you're when you are caught inside you just have to deal with it there's no getting out of the situation there's no 
you just you, you're in that moment and and you got to deal with it and i find that usually you just react with however however you possibly can and uh the night before when you're checking buoys and everyone's calling each other and texting each other and that's when when it gets really scary because you don't you know you know they um you don't know what it's really going to be like especially a place like jaws it's like am i going to get the biggest pull down of my life tomorrow am i going to get the biggest barrel of my life and um the anticipation is is pretty full on at, a, at when when swells like this hit. These are these are pretty special swells that are really only once or twice a year. Yeah, man. The night before, all you can do is really worry about it. You can't. You, there's nothing you can do until that that next day. And like you said, you, when you're in the moment, it it tends to take care of itself. Yeah, sure. All right, well, I think we're going to go back to Waimea here, and uh, we actually grabbed Zeke Lau uh, after his session at Waimea. So let's hear what he has to say about the conditions. Your session. My how, session. How is it? How's, how's this bay right now? This is pretty solid bay right now. Like, I mean, when I like top three times, I've surfed it like this big, but it's just gnarly with this wind right now. Yeah. It's crazy chops coming up the face. It makes everything a little more intense, but it's my second session of the day, so I'm a little beat. Yeah. Tired. Just trying to get one more good one, but it was sick just to be out there feeling all the energy. Mm -hmm. I figured like from 12 to now is going to be the biggest time, so. Right. Just being out there feels good. Right on. And, and some of those closeout sets, how, how you handling that? Was everyone yeah. just kind of like just watch. easy to dodge? or? Yeah. You can see them coming. They look way different than anything else that that's coming yeah. in. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so you can kind of play off that, but they're pretty easy to see. They're kind of loud, but mm -hmm. the hard part is staying in there yeah. while those things are coming and trying to stay in the spot to get a good one. But I don't know you just put the time in. Hopefully, it'll all come together one day. All right, back at Waimea Bay with the Surfline Cam. I am director of surf, uh, director of forecasting, Kevin Wallace. I'm joined by Mike Parsons. Um, Mike, that was I thought that was really interesting. He touched on something that that you did a little while back about having to sit in that exact right spot at Waimea and resisting the urge to paddle out when you see step, sets stacking on the horizon, uh, so you can you can get into those waves. Yeah, you, I mean you. The only way to get one is to resist the urge, and it's um, it's almost impossible to do. There's only a few guys and girls that will do it because every instinct in your body tells you get out now. You're you're going to get closed out on, and the wave just holds up and holds up and holds up and doubles up on that reef, and you can't catch it unless you sit on the reef. And uh, just like Zeke pointed out there, it's um, it's it's radical to try to do and. Um, there's, you know, throughout the history of YMA, there's been, you know, guys like Ross Clark Jones, Brock Little, Michael Poe, um, you know, uh, shoot, uh, Derek Donor back in the day was the man out there. Um, those guys are the guys that are able to sit there when everybody else just heads out. And I'm like looking back going, what are they doing? And next thing you know, they're on the way. But the, the one wave stands out to me that I... Uh, the Shane Dorian and Mark Healy wave where they took together, they closed out the whole bay. Like everyone was bolting from the horizon and those two guys just waited and waited and, and got it. So yeah, interesting to, to hear Zeke talk about the wind too. Like we were saying earlier that Waimea looked a little bit easier than Jaws wind wise, but, but even, even Waimea has got some huge bumps on it right now. Um, so treacherous conditions. It looks like um, it's almost like a sea breeze now um, on the North shore create some onshore and some bump. Yeah, and that, you know, that, uh, that will happen when we get these kind of lighter wind days. And it's, it's crazy to see the wind's light enough to get maybe a little sea breeze on Oahu, but it's still cranking trades, you know, 20, 25 knots um, over on Maui. Uh, we had a question from one of the users um, writing in about the wave you can see breaking way off in the distance um, up to the northeast, basically. And that is outer log cabins, actually. And um, that's a, a spot that's been popping off here and there and, and really only breaks on the biggest swells of the year and out many years won't break at all. Um, it's a you know, pretty unique spot and it actually can be the reason that Waimea Bay will sometimes be smaller than uh, a lot of other spots on long period swells because it steals some energy away. 
Um, but it's um, when it when it's working, it's a, a pretty incredible wave. And um, you know, also had some user questions about are these swells going to hit California? And the answer is yes, they are. Um, uh, you know, the, the, we've got a good swell that's that's filled into California today. Uh, was filling in filled into Northern California peak today. For Southern California, it's going to be peak kind of filling in. Um, well, it's dark now, obviously, but it's filled in this afternoon, and it's going to be peaking for most spots tomorrow. You know, it's not a giant swell. It's not like a obviously not nothing like we've seen here, but in line with a lot of the swells that we've seen um, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, this this one for tomorrow has got a lot of west in it too, which helps Southern California gets into a lot of those nooks and crannies. And then this swell in particular, uh, this swell that we're seeing now for for Hawaii is going to be filling in early next week. It's about two days away, kind of two and a half days away uh, from California, depending, you know, two days for Northern California, roughly, or really like a day and a half when it's super long period like this, because those longer period moves, moves quicker, um, day and a half to two days for Northern California and, and about two to two and a half days for Southern California. So that'll be a, a Monday and Tuesday swell in California. It also looks like we're going to see um, pretty breezy offshore wind, Santa Ana set up uh, it's Tuesday for Southern California and looks like both Monday and Tuesday potentially for Northern California. Uh, so waves coming, uh, wind coming too. Well, it looks like uh, a potentially very strong offshore flow, almost maybe a little bit too much uh, for some spots. But uh, if you don't mind the wind and uh, you're inspired by what you're seeing here today, uh, get out over the next couple of days because uh, we'll, we'll have waves in, in California as well. Um, we've got, um, yeah, as I said, we're, we're live here from the North Shore. We're checking out our Waimea cam. We've also got uh, a chopper over on Maui that we've seen some really cool stuff. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're going to check on the Red Bull Magnitude Women's Big Wave event update clip. Um, first of its kind of event, and today should provide some awesome waves. Can't wait to see that. So we'll be right back. some women that have been charging so hard for so long and they've just never been in the spotlight and I think it's great for us to have this uh, event to just encourage each other and to all get a chance to get out there and have fun and show what we can do. The Red Bull Magnitude is the first of its kind all-female digital big wave event. They'll all be vying for a $40,000 prize purse for best performer, runner-up, biggest wave and best wave.
I am joined by Mike Parsons. We've got a macking swell for Hawaii that we've been watching. Uh, we're seeing incredible footage from a helicopter here at JAWS. We have our cameras on the North Shore of Oahu at Waimea Bay. And we've also seen some great footage from Brent Bielman and team of some of the, uh, the outer reefs on Oahu. Uh, just been an incredible day to, to watch the surfing. And it's been fun to, to chat with you, Snips, uh, as we, we get back to Jaws here and the footage of the helicopter. You know, we saw a really good run of waves, uh, just pulsing sets, um, you know, about 20 minutes ago. Hopefully we'll get another run of sets here too. Things have cleaned up. It's been a challenging day, obviously on, on Maui with the big surf, uh, very strong winds, but uh, things have, have cleaned up and we saw some amazing waves from, uh, well, from the look, from the guys you'd expect to see it from, from from Kai Lenny, from from Ian Walsh, from DK Walsh, and um, uh, you know that that crew there. You know, snips there. There's we had actually had a question from from one of our users about a day like today, and uh, you know, pretty close to the, the day you got your 60 foot plus wave, whatever it was. And uh, as we see the footage here, you know, take us through what it's like getting whipped into something like this. What are you thinking, and what's on your mind, and, and and you know, is your heart just coming through your chest, or or what's going on? Yeah, you're just. I mean, when you're when you're on the the rope, and you're kind of like a set comes, everyone kind of stops their skis, and they're out the back, and and everyone's waiting for sets. And then when a set comes, you see people like start their skis, people move back on the rope, and then you sort of go, okay, here we go. Try to gather yourself and relax, and um. And then you just start tracking what wave you want and who else is going. A lot of times there's some little bit of jockeying, okay, whose turn is it? It's hard, after everyone waits a while, it's hard to tell who's up. And then when you're towing like these guys are doing here right now, you're just focusing on, okay, I'm coming in from deep. This looks like a Ian Walsh a second ago. Um, you're, you're just looking, where am I on the reef? A lot of times you're looking at the wave ahead of you and watching where it breaks and where it goes, you're like, okay, there's there's where it's going. I'm right in the spot. I'm right over the bowl. Um, and then you want to let go. Um, when you're feeling it, you want to let go kind of early so you get the whole drop and you get to you sort of let go early, do a couple S turns, stay up high on the wave, look around. Where's how deep am I? Where do I need to go? And um, it's a pretty amazing feeling actually because you're going that fast and you and um, you have a, a whole bunch of control on a tow board. It's like all of a sudden you're on a huge wave and now you can turn, whereas paddle surfing for, for years, you're on these 10 foot boards. And although they've gotten a lot better and, and, and they these guys and girls are performing at a super high level now, you're still not performing like you are on a, on a tow board. You can just make these subtle, quick adjustments. And um, so really you're just looking for, you know, where's my line, where am I on the reef? Um, you know, you see, Ian Walsh doing a really good job of it on these last couple of waves, kind of just toying with it right in the pocket, almost getting barreled, um, looking looking for the channel, um, and that's uh, yeah, it's a pretty exhilarating feeling when you when you first let go of the rope and that that uncertainty of you know how big is this wave, where am I on the reef? It's it's one of the more exciting feelings in the world for sure. Have you ever gone faster on a wave than you have at Jaws towing it? No, no, never. I the, the first time I surfed Jaws, I kicked out of the wave and I was yelling at Brad Gerlach, my partner. I, I can't believe how fast I was going. I felt like uh, my equipment was. I was. I I was on a seven four tow board and it was just maxing. And I I'll never forget like going. I don't think I've ever gone this fast on a wave in my life. The, the energy and the speed, especially on a swell like today, when you've got that big period and that wave's moving so fast, and then. Yeah, it's um, but that's also the cool thing about about tow surfing is, especially that you're on a four fin, so you know you've got that speed and that control, and um, nothing quite like it. That's amazing. Well, you know, we just wanted to take a, a quick second too to thank all the Big Wave Surfing Association surfers who have been sharing their stories with us today and and really over the last few weeks. Um, special thanks to Jamie Mitchell who has let us ride shotgun on this amazing swell chase he's been on. Um, it feels like he's been all over uh, every single swell for the last six weeks, and and uh, hopefully his his lovely partner and his his daughters will be will be happy to see him uh, when he finally gets home. But we look forward to bringing you more of this kind of content and have some special things on the horizon. It's it's been super fun to be a part of it. 
um, helping forecast and, and seeing a swell like this come to fruition. And uh, yeah, you know, just we'll, we'll sit back and we'll watch more of the action here. It's a, a super swell Saturday on, on Surfline. We are on Maui uh, at Piahi. Um, we've got footage from the helicopter here. Um, things have really turned on over the this afternoon. The swell's been building all day. Um, it's uh, peaking this afternoon and this evening, um, uh, basically right now. Uh, we're going to see our, our largest surf, and, and we should see some of the biggest waves of the day uh, at Jaws, uh, kind of right around sunset, which we are an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes away from, something like that. So we got a little bit of time, but it's pumping right now. Uh, seems like some of the, the, the sets we've seen are, are all a 60 foot on the face. Um, always a little tough to tell from, from a helicopter from an elevated position, but uh, just a, a, an incredible afternoon of waves here. And, um, you know, Snips, what, um, you know, like, wh when you were chasing swells like this, like, you know, what, wh was there, was there ever a, a, a question in your mind where like, oh, should I, you know, am I staying, staying home and going to Totos, going to Jaws, trying to do both? Did you ever do one of those those chases where it was like, um, you know, I'm doing Jaws today, uh, you know, next day I'm going to Mavericks, and then next day I'm, I'm going to try and get down to Totos. You ever do anything like that with like Sean or anything? Yeah, I did. I did lots of that, um, which was really hard because you you put in a full day. Um, I did uh, Jaws a lot, and then I'd surf Totos uh, after that. I also did. Um, um, Northern California, um, the uh, the big day off of um, um, the big giant right hander when Brad got his huge wave. What's the the right um, off the golf course? Um, oh, uh, ghost um, trees. Ghost trees. We did ghost trees on that crazy huge day um, where unfortunately Pete Dobby uh, lost his life. The next day we we drove through the middle of the night and um, surfed Toto. So the biggest day I've ever surfed at Toto. So it's it's taxing on the body. It's 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 amazing though to see um, to see the same swell in a place like Hawaii and then in Northern Cal or in or in Mexico. It's super fun to do. But I found that it was um, a lot of times I was a bit it was a bit much trying to be ready, and um, but super exciting to do. Um, Greg Long used to drag me along a, a lot on on even recently. What he does, he's done that so much over the last few years. Like do Jaws, do Mavericks, and then do Cortez. It's like after three days, you feel like you need a year off. So it's such a taxing, taxing deal, but uh, super fun to do. Yeah, absolutely. Like the, the action just, just continues here, seeing uh, waves and waves and waves roll through. Uh, you know, also wanted to give uh, a lot of people we want to thank and, and just have been stoked on the collaboration here. And so we want to give a special thanks to Futures, um, Future Fins for their support of Super Swell Saturday. Um, must be. I hope it's really cool for them to see their product in action here, as uh, the, the guys and gals are putting it through the paces. Uh, they're the standard when it comes to big wave fin setups, and and obviously we're we're seeing the the fruits of their labor with with some of the surfers out here today, and and the the performances that they're putting on. Yeah, I, I think huh. a couple of these waves. My um, the girls are getting quite a few waves right now, which is great to see. Um, I believe Paige was on one of these waves on this set, Paige Alms, um, and one of the young girls from, from Maui have been getting some great rides right here. And, um, yeah, that's, it's, it's awesome to see that, um, they're, they're really pushing it on every level, um, at Mavericks on these last few swells and then also today at Jaws. Gosh, as we look back at a replay of the set that just rolled through and uh, seeing seeing uh, a few, well, that looks like a pretty legit barrel right there, or, or very close to it. Um, just an incredible surf, and you know the the uh, the performances that we've seen um, from any number of surfers, whether it's it's some of the gals that have been charging here, so the, the Red Bull Magnitude crew, whether it's a, a seasoned veteran like uh, Pete Mel who's you know, probably gotten the best waves of his life and some of the best waves ever at Mavericks over the last couple of weeks. You know, a, a guy like um, uh, Billy Kemper, who is a, a four times PIE Challenge champion, seeing him get a couple of great ones, uh, Ian Walsh as well. Uh, it's it's uh, certainly a pleasure to watch all these 
uh, incredible surfers uh, push the limits um, and, and on, a day, on a day like today. Yeah, it, it really is uh, wild to watch these last couple rides, how much bump um, on the face of these waves. It's so radical when you get to the bottom and, uh, and pick your oh, line. Yeah, oh. yeah. oh, man, that's into the wind, too. That's really hard oh, to do right now. Wow. Oh, that was a huge wave, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting like that you don't see, I don't know if I can recall ever seeing someone get barreled like that on the left. That was amazing. Yeah, that was unbelievable. It really uh, faded the bottom turn and bred it perfectly. That was such a huge barrel. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. We're looking at it from however high up. But if you were down in front of that, that was an incredible ride. Going after somebody now here. Hopefully everyone's all right. Yeah. It, it's it's such a uh, risk to go left because you, it's, yeah, there's there's where you don't want to get caught in, in those rocks in there. But when you go left, you know, it's pretty sketchy. When you when you uh, kick out, the ski's got to be close because some of the, the, it shifts a little bit and sometimes closes out wide and you could get, you can get caught in there really bad. Again, this is our Super Swell Saturday coverage. I am Director of Forecasting, Kevin Wallace. I'm joined by Mike Parsons. Uh, we are live from Maui at Piahi, and the surf is just pumping right now as the swell builds to a peak. Uh, tow teams are out. It's a tow only affair this afternoon due to the size and the overall conditions, uh, and it's macking, macking surf as, as big, as, big as it's been, uh, at least in a couple of years, if, if not longer. Uh, it'll be fun to, to I, I'm really excited to actually see some of the, the, the angles of these waves from, from the water and from the, from the cliff. Cause like you said, you know, things are skewed a little bit when you're looking at it from above, you know, it's, it, we know it's really big. I can't really tell if it's 60 foot, if it's 70 foot, if it's bigger than that. Um, but certainly one of the biggest days we've seen in the last several years. And, um, it's, just fun to watch the, the the left that we just saw. It's an unidentified surfer. We're trying to figure out who that was, but uh, as good a wave as uh, you're ever going to see at Jaws. We don't you don't see guys um, getting barreled on the lefts or going on the lefts um, really at all, especially uh, at this size. As you mentioned, Snips, it's uh, it's pretty heavy if you get caught inside over there. And here's here's the the wave we're speaking of. Yeah, this is a giant, giant wave with huge bumps with the trade winds, and, you know, blowing into the face of this thing. And uh, that's about as, as wild as it gets. Um, like you said, not sure how it was, but really faded and, and, and put themselves in a really critical position there. Got a massive barrel and, and made it. So that's uh, that's one of those rides of a lifetime for sure. That was uh, That was incredible. Yeah, and it, yeah, as you mentioned, there, there's no there's no channel over on the left, so you don't get, um, you know, especially at this size, you don't see a lot of people going on the left. So I think that's the first one we've seen today um, that I rec I can recall, and it's the, that was the wave of the day, uh, and it's, it's sets continue to come in here. Looks like yeah. Our, 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 yeah, it looks like our, our stream may have frozen there for just a second. We'll, we'll head back to the North Shore of Oahu. Uh, Waimea Bay looks a little bit quiet on the sets, but it has been pumping all day today. Uh, we heard from, from Zeke Lau earlier and um, yeah, just talked about the, the size of the surf. Here's uh, a replay of a uh, wave at Jaws, uh, I think just a few minutes ago, unless we are back this morning, we may be back live now, actually. Um, you can see the flotilla in the channel there. Everybody out and checking it out, um, and we're back to Waimea Bay. All right, um, this is one of our two cameras at Waimea Bay. This is on the, the west side of the bay, looking towards the northeast, basically. Um, from time to time, you'll actually see a, a wave pop off in the distance, kind of the upper right-hand part of the screen. That's outer log cabins. 
uh, which is um, you know one of the outer reefs that really doesn't work very often, uh, kind of infamously surfed in on a big swell in, in January 1998 by Ken Bradshaw. That's probably when it uh, really came into the surfing mainstream um, on a, a, a giant, giant day. You know, it's in, incredible. We're looking back at um, some of the buoy observations on some of these really, really big swells, and that's you know that's a benchmark swell. That was uh, I believe it was January 28th, 1998. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear it called the code black swell uh, because they actually shut down most of the north shore they weren't allowing people to launch skis uh, waimea bay was closed down they weren't allowing surfers to go out although uh, one guy uh, if memory serves me correctly i think it was jason his name was jason majors uh snuck out and, and tried to get a couple of, of, of waves at the bay but ken bradshaw and team or out at uh, outer log cabins and, and, and surfing 60 to 70 foot surf out there. Uh, speaking of 60 to 70 foot surf, we're back to, to Jaws now. And um, yeah, uh, I, I, uh, so somewhat uh, our stream is, is breaking up a little bit. So uh, please be patient with us. We, we've we got uh, a chopper in there. We're on cellular technology. It's been, uh, the stream so far has been really good, but uh, a little jumpy right now, but um, overall, not too bad, and uh, we'll, we'll take it back to the to the North Shore here on Waimea Bay. Uh, again, you can you actually start to see uh, outer logs breaking off in the distance there a little bit, and some sets rolling through the bay. Now, Snips, do you ever surf? Have you ever surfed uh, outer logs? No, I, I haven't. Um, it's so so rare. It takes such a big swell to break. Um, but I was I was uh, blown away with the footage of. Um, Tony Ray and Ross Clark Jones on the day um, on the day that Ken Bradshaw got his huge waves, they they, they managed to make it out there and and uh, they've got this crazy story about flipping the ski and making it back to Haleiwa barely. Um, but um, yeah, that was a that was a wild swell and the, they just had those perfect east southeast winds and some of the biggest waves ever ridden out there outside logs. Yeah, it'll be fun to. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a weather dork, obviously, with with being a forecaster, and I kind of geek out on on you know past swells like that, and and I love looking back at some of the historical stuff, whether it's buoy observations or or the charts, yeah. and uh, you know looking look, looking back at that, and you know why it was why it was that way, you know there's another kind of you know historical swell, historic swell that was from 1969 that, that was incredible. I've done a little research on that and tried to figure out what it was. But you know, the, the 1998 swell, buoy one, uh, significant wave height was 28 feet at 20 seconds, um, which is just Whoa. an incredible number to, to give that some, some perspective. We got up to around, uh, I think buoy one topped out around 21, 22 feet at uh, 19 seconds. So not that far off, but you know, six feet of deep water swell. Um, actually can be 20 feet of wave height, if not a little bit more on some of the biggest sets. So, you know, imagine, um, you know, 98 was another, tw probably another 20 feet bigger as compared to what we're seeing right now um, at, at spots on the outer reefs uh, on Oahu. So uh, it's, it's pretty cool. And uh, we're, we're back to, or excuse me, we're back to, to, um, to Maui now. Uh, with our our um, streaming, uh, our, our footage is, is uh, streaming again, so we're still, we'll, we'll have a look here and see if we see some more, more sets coming through. It looks to me like the wind is a little bit lighter than uh, a few hours ago, which is kind of- Yeah, you know, not nice. seeing like, like all the white caps and stuff that we were seeing when we first started, or not, you know, not as, not as heavily white capped, I should say. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it's really turned into a beautiful afternoon. Yeah. Um, it, it really looks kind of almost uh, groomed, groomed up, even though it's still crazy strong with big pumps. It's definitely groomed it a little bit. You can see a, a lot of a lot of tow teams out there now, kind of circling and in hopes to get in the wave of their life. It's uh, it's weird on swells like this. You always you always have that in the back of your mind. Like um, at any point, at any time, you you could get the wave of your life on days like this. And, they're, they're all kind of hoping that that happens right about now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're the the surfer on the left is still uh, unidentified. We will we'll let you know if, if we figure out who that was, and uh, obviously someone coming in right now. But as, as 
um, good a wave as you're ever going to see pretty much at JAWS. And, and maybe we can cut to that in just a second as, as our stream uh, kind of flickers out again here. But, um, you know, just an, an incredible surf at Piahi. It's still building. Um, we expect it to, to peak this evening. Basically, it should be peaking uh, kind of right around sundown, which it's uh, 4.35 local time. Uh, so we're around an hour and a half away from sunset. So you should still see um, a bit more of a build here. We're, we're, we're back to the, the North Shore of Oahu at Waimea Bay at, at one of Surfline's cams, one of Surfline's two cameras on the North Shore and uh, looking at still pretty incredible surf on at, at Waimea Bay. We saw some closeout sets earlier today. Um, uh, kind of they've been peppered in throughout the day one in the late morning and um you know z cloud was on earlier and, and and spoke to a couple of them too and um you know we, we also have some seen some great waves from oahu's outer reef so maybe we can cut to that in a second uh it's been beautiful conditions um but we'll, we're actually gonna we'll cut to a commercial here in just a second and so we'll be right back Welcome back to Super, Super Swell Saturday. I am Surfline Director of Forecasting, Kevin Wallace. I'm joined by Mike Parsons. We have been here live on the North Shore of Oahu and also over on Maui, uh, just watching this epic swell today. Pumping surf, biggest swell of the year, biggest swell of the last couple of years, uh, if not longer. Uh, here's our Waimea Bay cam, um, obviously on the North Shore of Oahu. We've seen some incredible footage from some of the outer reefs and uh, some historic footage over on JAWS where we've got a helicopter and we are streaming some uh, some waves over there. And it's been pumping over the last couple hours, seems to have really turned on at JAWS the last couple hours. Uh, wind is back down a little bit and um, it is absolutely pumping. Here's the outer reefs uh, from earlier today. I believe this is Mikey Wright and uh, just beautiful big blue conditions, light wind and this pumping swell out there. I think we'll, we'll cut to, I believe we'll cut to, uh, here's what it feels like to get caught inside at one of those auto reefs or, or pretty close to it. Uh, 
on the ski. It's Abe Lerner and Brett Billman, I believe. They've been uh, supplying us with footage um, of this outer reef session and really all over the North Shore, the outer reefs all over the North Shore. And uh, we'll, we'll get to uh, some of the other stuff too. Here's, here's John John Florence at one of those outer reefs from earlier today. Oh my God, already it looks good. Just oh wait. <laughs> Right here, those are photos to keep. It right looks there. like a cloud break from that. Those are photos to keep. Holy shit. Oh, God, it almost made that thunder. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Snips, what's the better wave? Is, is, is it John Don's wave or is it that left that we saw at, at, at Jaws? Oh, God. Well, John Don doesn't make his, but it's, I think it's, it might be one of those photos that you just stare at for the rest of your life going, are you serious type of photo. Um, so totally different. One's a paddle, one's a toe. So I, I, I think paddling into a left as big as John Don's wave is um, about as heavy as, as it gets for me. Um, the, the toe wave's incredible, but it's much easier to do. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, if, I'm not sure if we can bring up the replay of that, that uh, the left at Jaws. We will if we can in just a second. But um, you know, it's it's been absolutely pumping. Here's here is um, here's the no, nope, not quite. Uh, we're, well, we're back at White Man, but it's yeah, it's just been. Um, incredible afternoon of surf and we'll jump back to, to jaws real quick here's the left that we were speaking of um you guys at home you can compare and, and let us know what you think is better the better one is it john john's or is it this one yeah two incredible rise very very different but um man the amount of wind that jaws going left with that trade wind because that wind's blowing straight into that wave it's just the amount of chatter on the face you're you're really holding on and, uh, we'll figure out who that was for sure. I'm not quite sure who it was, but an incredible ride. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, we're, we're back here on the North Shore. This is uh, Waimea Bay. We've seen uh, some closeout sets kind of sprinkled in throughout the day. Um, and when that happens, that means, uh, you know, surf is solidly 20, 25 foot Hawaiian. Uh, when we see those closeout sets and, and uh, overall it's just been um, uh, an, an epic day of surf. Um, you know, winds much lighter on Oahu, but still somewhat challenging. And uh, you can see some of the outer reefs popping off uh, just there in the distance, kind of the upper right hand corner of the screen or upper right part of the screen. Uh, you can see that uh, outer log cabs is outer log cabins is occasionally breaking as well. You know, well, uh, this the, the storm that set up this swell uh, that happened a few days ago or happened over the last couple of days was um, one in probably, geez, uh, you know, maybe a dozen hurricane force lows that we've seen uh, over, or at least probably eight to 10 hurricane force lows that we've seen over the last uh, month or so. It's just been this incredible run in the North Pacific. Here it is here on the, on the satellite imagery. And that's textbook. It's that comma shape. You can see those kind of popcorn looking clouds um, are um, indicative of uh, very strong wind mixing down to the surface of the ocean, which is what you want to see. Um, for a big swell to develop. The storm was close to Hawaii. Um, you know, it was around 1,000 to 1,500 miles away when it was at its strongest. So that's about the perfect distance you want to be. You want the storm to be close enough where you send a big swell, but not so close that you get the bad weather and the bad wind associated with it. You, here's our, our significant wave height animation. Um, you know, that purple and even platinum blob, when you see those uh, silver gray colors on the, the surf line chart here, that's uh, that means wave heights. Uh, 50 feet or above. You know, this this storm was modeled to have peak seas around 55 feet. We saw satellite verified seas of, uh, of 50 feet. And um, overall, you know, one of the more impressive storms we've seen in the North Pacific this year. And, uh, and that's saying something because it's just, um, the North Pacific has spun out strong storm after strong storm, hurricane force uh, storm after storm uh, over this last month. And you know, we've got uh, trades for Oahu and Piahi or, or for Maui, uh, much stronger on Piahi, obviously. But uh, you know, the, one of the interesting things is we should see the, the front pass to the north of the islands today, and that should really uh, cause the winds to slacken quite a bit overnight and heading into Sunday. So the swell that's peaking now uh, is going to be dropping off through the day on on uh, Sunday, but much lighter winds, you know, potentially kind of glassy conditions out there 
and I think we're going to see some great paddle in waves out there. Uh, and just uh, while our, our chopper refuels at JAWS, we're going to watch some of the highlights from the O'Neill wave of the winter. Uh, then we'll be back to watch a few more sets of JAWS as this amazing swell continues to pulse. Kevin Wallace, the Director of Forecasting at Surfline. I'm joined by Mike Parsons, and we are following live this XXL swell that's filled into the Hawaiian Islands today. It's been on the rise pretty much all day over on Maui. It's going to be peaking late this afternoon and this evening. Uh, we're at a, a peak essentially now. The, the swell's been peaking uh, from kind of late morning through uh, basically right now. Uh, on Oahu, here's our Waimea Bay cam. This is one of two camps that we have at Waimea Bay. This is on the, the east side of the bay and kind of looking back towards the northwest. You can see the sun starting to set. Uh, and here's our other Waimea Bay cam looking uh, back over to the northeast. And um, it's a great view. And actually in the distance, you can see outer log cabins that's uh, popping off here and there. You know, Snips, it's been um, really pretty cool to, to, to see this go down and uh, you know, our chopper is heading back out to jaws now and we're, we're hoping to catch a few more amazing tow rides where it's, it's been a tow affair over on 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 maui uh, the swell is big enough it's long period enough and it's um, windy enough over there that it's it's really not a paddle type of swell uh, just one of those days where it's it's tone only and we've seen some incredible waves including what may be the, the ride of the year uh, on a left a little bit earlier on, but um, you know this the, the the Maui crew is 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 holding it down, and uh, as we we move back to to Waimea Bay here, the sun is getting a little bit lower in the horizon. We're just about an hour away from sunset. This is the golden hour on the North Shore where the winds almost get better. The surf almost always gets better too, uh, and um, the 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 lighting is just kind of perfect. So. We'll, we'll stay here for just a bit and, and watch that sun go down, relax a little bit. And um, Snips, we've had a couple a couple of users uh, uh, ask us, and feel free to deflect on this if you want to, but they want to know where you're sitting tomorrow. Um, yeah, um, I got, I've got i got two options. One is go north um, and one is go south. I'm just kind of <laughs> waiting here to decide. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, uh, there's going to be great waves to the south of, uh, I'm in Southern Cal, I've been in San Clemente, so obviously that Santa Barbara Ventura area is gonna be pumping, um, and a lot of my favorite spots in Baja are gonna be great tomorrow, so uh, no um, no shortage of, of, of options for great waves tomorrow. How about you, Kevin, where are you gonna surf? I know you just had a newborn, congratulations on that. Are you, uh, you been getting any sleep? Or are you gonna be able to surf tomorrow? Thank you. Yeah, it's um, uh, sleep has been somewhat fleeting. Uh, I, I, I grab naps here and there. Overall, she's been pretty good, though. She lets us get a few hours at a time. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that I, I might be able to get out in the water tomorrow. I think my, my wife is watching this broadcast right now. So, um, babes, I'd, I'd love if I could sneak away, even though I've been working all day today. We'll, we'll see how, how that goes over with a three week old at home. Um, but um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to get in the water. And, and obviously, we've got Hey, we've, we've got waves coming in for the next few days in, in Southern California and California in general. Um, it's been nonstop for a month and a half. 
Um, it kicked off with a big swell in Hawaii around December 2nd, December 3rd, and we've been going strong since then. Actually, that the day we went to the hospital, um, you know, we're, we're here in, in the Newport Beach area, so we went to Hogue Hospital, and I could see like blackies just going off from, you know, the, <laughs> the sixth floor of the hospital, and uh, I thought it was, a pr it was a pretty great day to have my daughter be born, just this, you know, this beautiful sunny day, and, and the surf's going off, and you look back towards the east and the mountains, and there's snow in there, and um, it was, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been fun to see. I'm, I'm glad we, this, the swell keeps going too, cause I felt like I was kind of on the sidelines for two weeks and I was missing all the action. And, uh, so it's, it's nice to, to have this, this big swell here and, and to be chatting about it and just to, to watch the action go down. And, and, you know, it's, it's remarkable that we're just cruising up the coast, uh, of Maui, <laughs> basically towards Jaws with this footage from the helicopter after it's refueled and, and switching back and forth between, uh, you know, between Maui and between between the North Shore of Oahu. So um, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully get a, a few more rides here, um, and then I'm probably going to go need to to, to to feed baby girl and, and uh, pay attention to my wife and her for a little while. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, these shots of the uh, helicopter going up the coast never get old for me. It's just, Maui is... Um, such an amazing island. Um, if anyone listening has never been there, it's a it's a special one. I, it's got so much variety, right? Because you've got you know the biggest wave in the world in Jaws, and then you've got all the windsurfing stuff. That Hukip is a really cool spot, and then over on the other side, you got that magical Honolulu Bay. That's that's uh, one of the premier waves in the world. It's just a really really great island. I was lucky enough to be over there earlier this year for the. The women's uh, CT event. Um, unfortunately, there was the crazy shark attack that, that left everyone stunned and had to leave, and um, which was really wild. Um, but Maui is one of my favorite places in the world, so it's been awesome to watch this. I, I just I can't say enough of how how spectacular Jaws is, and it's been so cool to, to watch this helicopter footage. Yeah, and here we, we come into JAWS right now, uh, slowly zooming in. Uh, you can see all, all the action in the channel, all the boats, all the skis out in the channel. And uh, it's been really neat to, to get this aerial coverage because, number one, you, know, you can see the, the, the lines and the power of the swell just, just marching in as, we, you know, as you shift back to the left and uh, you're kind of looking to the north, essentially. And uh, as those waves wrap in and start to hit that reef, um, just how they horse you in and, and here's looking towards the cliff. Actually, that's where, you know, during the contest, I believe that's where, or no, it was the other side of the gulch actually, where they'd have the, the contest, all the scaffolding and stuff set up. I'm not sure as we zoom back out. There no, they, they'd, have it. they'd have it there. Yeah. So that near yeah. that field, which is an incredible view from up there. I've been lucky enough to, to be involved in the contest the last few years and work with Rodney Kilborn, uh, handsome bar, who's an awesome guy, um, and just does an insane job with that contest. And um, it's just an incredible view from up there. It's like it's one of the greatest spectacles in the world when, when there's a day like this and you and you can watch from up there. Yeah, that was you know last uh, the, the the event in 2019. Um, I got to watch from the cliff all day, and and it was. You know, number one, it was a pumping, so it wasn't as big as a swell, but it was still a very big swell, and and um, it was just super consistent, and and to, to to be there and see it from the cliff, and and have that vantage point after being in in the channel a couple times, it's a it's a pretty special place, and and just to see the all the logistics that go into the contest, obviously too, um, with safety and things like that, and we've 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 shifted back here to Oahu. This is this is Waimea Bay. Um, and uh, still some great sets coming in there. The sun's coming, the sun's just about setting. We're about an hour away from sunset. Uh, so just a, a beautiful evening here. This is our other Wine Bay Bay Cam on the other side of the bay, looking back up towards the northeast and uh, continue to see lines pouring. It does seem like it's maybe slowed down a little bit. We haven't seen a, a real big set there um, in some time, although we've been spending a lot of time over at Jaws because it's been just going off. Uh, so we may, may have miss, missed a couple there. and. Um, here we are back at Jaws. Yeah, it looks like the crowd's yeah. pretty light away here right now, so that's cool. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I always, yeah, I always got to look at the, the opportunities. So many people chasing swells nowadays, and YMA is one of the more one of the more busy spots for sure.
All right. Well, I think we are we're pretty close to wrapping up our, our commentating here. We're going to keep the stream going as long as the chopper's in the air. We've got a, just about another hour of daylight to, to run through, and the swell's still building. Uh, we expect the swell to, to be peaking in Maui kind of right around sunset. So look for a continued uh, just pumping surf there over on Maui. We'll, we'll, we'll switch it back and forth between Maui and, and Waimea Bay here. Um, but uh, even after we hop off, uh, we're just going to we'll keep it rolling. So enjoy it. Uh, watch the sunset. Snips, uh, it's been great talking with you for the last couple hours. And uh, hope you're able to get some waves coming into California over the next couple of days. Thanks, bud. It's been awesome and uh, really fun to do. Glad uh, you guys had me involved. It's awesome to watch these waves. And uh, yeah, everyone have a fantastic evening. Get waves tomorrow, wherever you are in the world. And thanks for, for checking us out. All righty. Uh, well, that concludes Super Swell Saturday, at least a commenting, commentating part of Super Swell Saturday. But you guys uh, stay online. We're going to keep it streaming for as long as our chopper's in the air and as long as we have daylight, which should be the next hour or so. Uh, until then, aloha.